everybody. Welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. My name is Melissa O'Connell and I'm your Lexus Technology Specialist. And today we are going to take a deep dive look at the Lexus LX600. Our longer videos have a time-stamped index right in the descriptions. You can just jump through to a specific subject that you'd like to learn more about. You'll either see show more if you're on a desktop, just click to open the timestamp index. And if you're watching on mobile, look for the word more somewhere below the video title. That will open the video description and you can scroll through the images of the chapters. Click view all if you'd like to see the chapters in list view. You can also see the full timestamped index in the mobile format by clicking on more from above. The LX has a few different style options. The standard build has seating for five with a spacious rear cargo area. The premium, luxury, and export handling packages have seating for seven, using a power folding third row that folds flat into the floor. And the ultra luxury package has seating for four, and it's really intended for guests who have a driver. We're going to review as many details as possible for the various versions of the LX that I have access to. When you set up a new vehicle with Lexus interface, you go in a slightly different order than the other vehicles that you may have had in the past. It's a best practice to set up your Lexus app and driver profile first. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to explore exterior features, the cargo area, and the rear passenger cabin, and then we'll set up your driver profile and learn all about the features and technology up front. So if you've already set up your driver profile, or you would like to go ahead and do that first, just use the timestamped index in the description below the video, and then you can jump around and learn in any order that works best for you. So come on, let's learn together. Let's take a look at the exterior of the vehicle. Headlamp washers are linked to windshield wiper operation and are operated when the headlamps are turned on. When they're activated, the headlamp washer tray will slide out and washer fluid will be sprayed onto the headlights. The towing mount is located behind the cover at the center of the rear bumper. Using the flat head screwdriver, go ahead and remove the two clips holding the tow hitch cover in place. Gently work the flat head screwdriver in between the housing and the center post of the clip. Just snap out and then you can remove the clip. Gently pop the cover off. You'll see that there are four insert clips across the top and two on the side, and they all snap into place when you're ready to put it back on. If you're going to tow something, make sure to consult the owner's manual and instructions specific to towing. To put everything back on, just match up the trim so that you have everything going in the right directions. Line up the two hooks at the bottom, and then slide each hook into place. and make sure to press firmly until everything is secure. Then when you're ready to put these posts back into place, you want to make sure that the post is still pulled out, but don't remove it completely. It should be kind of snug. Then when you put this back in, you're going to snap it flush, and then it'll spread these prongs out and it'll hold it into place. Let's do that. So if you've snapped yours closed like I just did, just reopen it. There you go. And now we can put them back in place. All set. Parking sensors are located across the front, integrated into the new grille design, and across the rear bumper. There are four sensors at the front 
and four at the back. The fuel door has been relocated to the driver's side of the vehicle. The fuel door is opened from a manual latch just inside on the lower left portion of the dash. Just lift to pop it open. And there's a great little storage spot for the cap. And a wheel lock kit. The wheel lock has a wave pattern on the lug nut and the key is located with the tools in the rear cargo area. The LX600 comes with three electronic keys, two key fobs and a card key. If you need to manually lock or unlock the vehicle, you'll use the mechanical key and the key cylinder. To locate the mechanical key, look for the word push on the side of the key, press the dot, and then release the mechanical key. One twist to the left will lock. One twist to the right will unlock driver's door only. A second twist to the right will unlock the whole vehicle. When you're ready to restore the mechanical key to the key fob, just make sure to insert until you hear a click. The smart access system operates all doors. Just keep your key on your person, in your pocket or a bag. Put your hand in the driver's door handle and it will unlock the driver's door only. It is customizable, so you can program that to unlock all doors if you prefer. Touching the indentation will lock the vehicle. And with the auto folding mirror feature turned on, you'll have a great indication that your vehicle is locked when your mirrors fold in. You can also unlock and lock from passenger doors. When you put your hand in the door handle of a passenger door, it's going to unlock the entire vehicle and lock. But you can also use the buttons on the key fob to lock, unlock, push and hold to operate the new single panel power back door or press and hold to sound the alarm. Now, if you're still using the alarm button to locate your vehicle in a parking lot, you are definitely going to want to change that and just use the Lexus app. Your remote connect feature in the Lexus app has a find icon at the bottom right hand corner. It allows you to locate your Lexus in its last parked location. Starting route. Proceed to the route, then arrive at your destination. I'll show you how to set up the Lexus app and link your driver profile when we move to the interior of the vehicle. You can also use the key fob to remotely start your vehicle. You do have to be in proximity of the vehicle, generally about 80 feet away. You're going to use the lock button and press, press, press and hold. And it takes a few seconds. You'll see the indicator lights start to flash. You'll hear the engine start. If you're watching closely, you'll even see the auto leveling headlights do their adjustment leveling self check. And when you unlock the vehicle, the engine will stop. When you remote start the LX, whether it's from the key fob or the app, it's going to run for 10 minutes. Any attempt to enter the vehicle when it's running from a remote start, it will shut off the engine. So when you hop in, just apply the brake and push start and you'll be on your way. But my favorite way to remote start the LX is with the Lexus app. You'll see your vehicle with your VIN or vehicle name at the top, lock, unlock, start, and hazard light operation. To remote start the vehicle, make sure that it's locked and then touch and hold on the start command. If you're near your vehicle, you'll see the lights flash you may even hear the engine turn on. And on your phone, you'll receive a notification. Then you'll notice the countdown clock underneath the word stop, letting you know that your LX will run for a 10 minute remote start cycle. You can actually do two 10 minute remote start cycles in a row, and then you'll need to start the vehicle with the key from inside.
Let's start with some cool new details about this new power back door setup. To open the rear door using the touch pads at the back of the vehicle, make sure you have your smart key on your person. There is a large rubber touch pad on the left, that's unlock, and a small rubber touch pad on the right, that will lock the vehicle. So to open the back door, just push the large pad on the left. You'll hear a beep, step back out of the way, and the door will open. This is the first time that the LX has a single back door rather than a two-piece split back door with a tailgate. My favorite new feature on the power back door for the LX is the optional kick sensor. It's located on the right hand side instead of in the center because you do have towing capabilities and the tow hitch is located in the center. So as long as you have your smart key on your person, just kick and then step back a little bit when you hear the beeps so that the door has room to open. So easy to use, you can even kick to close. Listen for the beeps and step back out of the way so that the door has room to operate. Keep in mind that when you kick to close, it's going to close, but it's not going to automatically lock the vehicle. So either use the lock button on your key fob, the smart access lock buttons on the doors, or the smart access small lock button at the rear of the LX. But there is a setting that can be customized at your Lexus dealer service department that allows you to kick to close and then walk away and it will close the back door and lock the vehicle. A couple of great things about this new back door is that it is now height adjustable. To adjust the height of the new power back door, position the door at the height that you would like to save. Just press the button on the left, stop it where you want it, and then push and hold. You're listening for those four beeps. If you'd like to reset it, push and hold. Four beeps, keep holding, two more. Six total beeps, now we're reset. Push the button, stop, push again, and it'll open back up to the max height. Just stop it where you want it, push and hold the button on the left hand side, get those four beeps and your new position is saved. If you'd like to push the button to close and automatically lock, you do need to walk away because it has sensors that detect the key. It's just gonna beep, it's waiting for me to get out of the way. We know the LX is locked because we have the auto folding mirrors turned on and they have folded in. Taking a look at the rear cargo area. If you have the optional digital rear view mirror, you'll have a camera mounted against the glass of the rear window. The cargo net accessory. When you take a look at the tab that's clipped to the center section, you'll see two different hooks. Instead of hooking the back hook on, which won't actually hold anything in place, connect the front piece to the front center cord because it will actually hold on for you. Then you can attach the second hook to create separate pockets for cargo. That stows into its own zip pouch. Unhook from the anchor points, roll it up, and zip it up. The lower hooks connect to D-rings at the floor of the vehicle. The hooks are plastic, so make sure that you take good care of them if you're going to remove the cargo net to store larger cargo in the back of the vehicle. There are four D-ring anchor points in the rear of the vehicle for cargo netting. If you have a small accessory cargo mat, whether it's carpet or an all weather style mat, make sure to locate the opening for the D-rings to push through so that you can secure any cargo net that you choose to use. You have tools and a small storage cubby located underneath the small cargo area at the very back of the vehicle. To remove any cargo mat before you access the storage area. You'll see a tab at the center. Just lift up 
to open. Tools on the left and the pouch with your wheel lock key is usually on the right hand side. The wheel lock key will fit the wave pattern of the wheel locks. To remove the tools, just unhook the Velcro straps and then follow the instructions to slide the latch mechanism open. The jack is stored inside the vehicle on the left-hand side. Make sure to reattach the straps. If you need to, you can loosen the strap, then clip it into place and cinch down. Unfortunately, the zipped pouch cargo net does not store into this rear cargo cubby. If you're not going to use it in the vehicle, you might want to remove it altogether and just store it somewhere in your home. Your LX should also have a first aid kit located in the back. It is the new hard shell case. Some first aid kits will come with Velcro on the back. I've noticed that they don't seem to connect to the carpeted cargo mat. They do, however, connect well to the seat backs and it's a nice and easy place to store them but I actually prefer not to use the Velcro and to store the first aid kit in a different spot. And that's just because for me, I don't like to Velcro to the backs of the seats just to take the best care of the fabric on the backs of the rear seats. Looking on the right hand side in the cargo area, you have a door that looks like it would be for a storage cubby, but it's actually a fuse box. So you won't be storing anything in here. If you open it, just make sure to hook the lower tabs in first and then snap it back into place. On the left-hand side in the cargo area, we have a lot more going on. You'll have the light that turns on automatically when the rear door is open, and then you'll have different button configurations to operate power seats. The buttons are going to vary depending on which package you have on the vehicle. You have a 120 volt AC outlet, and behind door number two, you have a vented door that allows you to access the jack for changing a tire. It is hooked into place and tightened so that it doesn't move and make noise when you're driving. So if you do remove the jack to use it, make sure that you restore it in the same way so that it will be quiet as you drive. When you're ready to put the cover back, start with the bottom points and snap it into place. Now let's talk about seat operation, especially power seat operation. If you have a manually operated second row, you will just see power control buttons for the third row seats. If you have a power second and third row, you will see this setup. You have the option to fold down all seats simultaneously or operate third row seating only or second row seating only. To operate power seats, you'll see L for left and R for right. Second row seats can be power folded down, but they are manually folded up from the second row. Third row seats, they do finally stow beautifully flat into the floor of the LX. Previous models, they stowed up and to the sides, and so you lost some cargo area. Now you have a much more open and spacious configuration with the seats folded flat into the floor. The button that says all allows you to fold all seats down automatically. It does not restore the seats to the upright position. To restore the seats, power operate the third row and manually operate the second row. Before you operate the third row, you want to make sure that the seat belts are up and out of the way. They have a clip that the strap slides into, but you want to also stow the seat belt clip itself. So before you secure the strap, raise the seat belt clip up, slide the strap into place, and then slide the clip for the belt into place. Now everything will be out of the way to operate the rear seats and it'll be more quiet when you drive. Make sure to do the same on both sides. If you just need a little additional room in the cargo area, the first press of the button to stow the seats will tilt them slightly forward. 
and then they'll stop. First press, giving you just a little bit of room and you will not hear a beep at the end of that operation. To continue to stow them flat, push and hold. If the headrest was up, it will automatically fold for you. Raising both third row seats simultaneously. Once you've heard the beeps, you can let go of the buttons. Push and hold until the action is complete. If you let go at any point, you're going to hear an alarm. Push and hold. When you hear the two beeps, the operation is complete. The headrests are manually placed in the upright position. You can manually fold down the headrest. You can also operate power third row seats from inside the vehicle. L for left, R for right, pushing down on the right hand side toggle to fold. And again, just hold until you hear the beeps. These controls are located on both sides of the vehicle. Rear cabin dome lights for the third row. Just give a push of the button to turn them on or off. Third row passengers can adjust the amount of recline for their seats. These buttons will not fold the seats flat. And they each have a USB-C charging port. There are also two cup holders on each side and an additional small storage cubby on the right hand side. Before folding the seats flat, it's always a good idea to store the seatbelt connectors nice and flat. The storage spot for the seatbelt is tucked behind the second row seats. Just lift up the seatbelt clip, slide the belt into place, and bring the clip down to hold it all together. To manually fold down the second row, use the handle on the outside of each outboard seat. Just lift up and the seat will fold down and tumble forward. If lifting up on the large portion of the handle is not as easy for you, you can actually press back on this section of the handle instead, and it does the same operation. If you'd like to just fold the seat flat, lift up on the handle, and then when it begins to tumble forward, just press back down until it clicks into the latch in the floorboard. Just remember that once it's clicked into the latch and the floorboard, it's not possible to tumble it forward manually from this position. You will need to raise the seat back up and then lift the lever and let it fold and tumble all in one motion. To place the seat back down, simply press and click into place. And use the handle to do the same on the other side. Nice and easy. Keep in mind that if you do have people coming through when the seats are tumbled forward, that they don't lock into place. If they're using the tumbled forward seat for leverage as they climb in, they need to be mindful that they don't bring the seat back down while they're coming through. You can push the left or right buttons to fold the second row seats, or you can push them at the same time. Push and hold, you'll hear the beep, and they'll fold down. If you have helpers in the third row, 
they can even raise the second row seat backs by themselves. And if they would like to fold the second row seats, they can do that also. The release for that is on the outside and it's a lower handle that you have to pull toward the third row until the seat releases. And then it can fold down on the right and left hand side. To raise the second row seats to their upright position, whether you have the optional power folding second row or the manually operated second row, just lift up on the shoulder of the seat until it clicks into place. Once it's clicked into the first position, you can adjust the tilt angle with the lever. Just lift up on the lever and tilt the seat shoulder back. To fold and tumble forward the power second row seats, you'll use the button on the shoulder at the top. In order for the seats to move forward, they might need to adjust the seat in front of them. You'll press and hold the button. The seat in front will move. When you hear the beeps, let go of the button and it will fold and tumble forward. If you folded the seat flat and you forgot to use the button to tumble them forward, not to worry, just push the button until you hear the beeps and it will tumble forward from the folded position. The driver's side seat has an additional tether to secure it in place if needed. Open the storage compartment, locate the tether, and you will need to unhook the Velcro so that you can have more slack. When you squeeze the bottom section together, it allows you to have more slack. When you let it go, it clamps down. You're going to hook onto the outside handle, cinch the strap taut, and put the Velcro piece back together. This will help secure the seat behind the driver position if necessary. When you're ready to put everything back, undo the Velcro, squeeze to release the clamp, and get more slack if needed. Then you can unhook from the handle, line up the Velcro so that it stows properly Otherwise, it might not all tuck away into that spot. So you're going to kind of accordion style the strapping. Then tuck that into the top of the hook. Then you want the hook position to be at the bottom so that the soft fabric is at the top. That just allows a little more room and give when you're putting it all away. To return the seat to the floor, just press and click into place. You can see the seat anchor points, that's what holds the seating in place when the seats are folded down. Now, if you are going to leave your seats stored up most of the time, you can actually remove these covers that pop off and they snap into the floor. I will tell you, they're not super easy to get off. And then if you are going to need your second row seats back in place, you've got to remember to remove those covers so that these clamps that attach to the anchor points don't break those covers. And we wanna make sure that your seats are anchored correctly. The seats that tumble forward behind the front passenger seat do not have a tether to hook into place. They have a spot for it, but that's really for other countries that have right side drivers. Second row headrests are adjusted manually. Just locate the latch on the right side post. So just put your fingers underneath the headrest, push that in, and then you can lift up even to remove it or adjust the height slightly. It's not a big adjustment, but it is a little bit. You can lift up on the middle headrest to snap that into place. And notice that the center headrest 
has two release points and longer posts. Pressing the release on the left side will not allow you to lower the headrest. Push the release on the right side and then you can make your adjustment. You can even create a pass-through with the release for the center section. Here's how. With the bench seat configuration, it can fold in a 40-20-40 split. That means that the center section can be folded independently of the outside main seats. The lever for that is located on the seat back below the center headrest. Make sure that you don't have any cargo or any people for that matter in the center seat section because it does come down pretty quickly. Just lift the clasp and it will go zipping down. If you're locating that lever from the second row, you'll need to come up and over the headrest and then you can have better control of that center section as it folds down. Second row air conditioning vents above both doors and at the footwells for the main seats. Rear cabin dome lights. Just give a push of the button to turn them on or off. When door mode is activated at the front of the vehicle, all dome lights will turn on when a door is opened. The ambient lighting with the customizable themes also appears along the second row door trim and door handles. Optional second row sunshades. When you're raising and lowering the sunshade, you want to use the tab at the center, lift up so that you have room to move it off or on the hook, and when you lower it, it will stow all the way into place. So it's nice and flush. When you're ready to raise them back up, use the tab and over both hooks. You can fold the armrest down, pop open the cubby for cup holders, or click it closed, or stow it up. Taking a look at the controls in the second row for the rear cabin passengers, a really cool detail is that they have access to the center console to reach things in the cool box. So if you've got kiddos in the back and you're getting everybody buckled in and ready to go and then you forgot you wanted to grab a juice box from the cool box, no problem. You don't even have to go around to the front seats to get it. Coming down to our central air conditioning vents, you can close or open and adjust the tilt angle. Seat fan or heat for the left side passenger. The first press turns on auto to take over control for manual adjustment, high, medium, or low. Press again for off and the same for heat. The first press will go to auto. So if you press heat and it turns the fan on, press heat again and the heating element will engage. Just remember that the auto feature is considering the selected interior cabin temperature and the outside ambient temperature to make adjustments. So just take over if you prefer a different setting. If you try to adjust temperature and you don't see it change on the screen, it just means that the rear cabin air is not turned on. You can control that from the front screen or right at the back, just by engaging the fan. Less fan, click down, more fan, click up. Once the fan is on, you can adjust left side passenger temperature and right side passenger temperature. You can also adjust the fan mode just by pushing the mode button and it will cycle through all of the available airflow modes or you can turn the fan to auto and it will adjust not only fan speed but airflow mode automatically based on the selected temperatures for the rear cabin and outdoor temperature. Coming down, we have a compartment for all of the inputs for charging and the rear entertainment system. 
you have a 12 volt accessory charger, two USB-C port chargers, two wired headphone jacks, and an HDMI port for tethered content that would run on the rear entertainment screens. Just close it up if you're not going to use those features. Taking a quick look at the rear entertainment system, the most important thing to know about the rear entertainment system, it is not a DVD player. So you can just check those out because we don't even have a disc reader on the vehicle anymore. The CD and DVD player is a thing of the past on the LX. So for all those parents out there wondering where the remote controls have gone in their vehicles, not to worry, now, it's a touch screen. Power. You can click the hard button for source or click right on screen. Your source options are FM, AM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth audio, USB for music if you have a USB music flash drive in the front USB-A port. Apple Music and Amazon Music are streaming services that require subscriptions to those services and a Wi-Fi hotspot subscription through AT&T for the vehicle. Rear HDMI, that's the HDMI port that we just saw, and rear mirror casting. Mirror casting means you can click on the command and then connect a device to watch content from a phone or maybe a smaller tablet that you would like to stream on the large screen at the rear of the vehicle. Be aware that not all phones support Miracast. Just click reorder if you would like to change the order of the items that you see. Touch the item that you want and just swipe to drag it to the other page. Not all items can fit on the first page. One item has to be on the second page. So just pick the item that you know for sure you're not going to use from the rear of the vehicle and touch and drag until you've got it where you want it. Then click OK. Choose your source. If it's an audio source, you can click Tune to tune to the next available signal. Use the channel arrows to sort through radio favorites that have been saved at the front of the vehicle. Everything operates with touchscreen and it's very simple to use. You can separate the audio from the main vehicle audio by clicking Audio Separate. It's going to tell you, please select Separate Mode if you would like to enjoy rear audio and video separately, or select synchronize mode for output from all speakers. At the top right corner of the screen, if it says audio synchronize, that will allow the sound to come through the entire vehicle. If you choose separate, then it will allow the sound to come through the headphones only. You should receive two headsets, that can be plugged in. The headphones coming on the Lexus LX are noise canceling wired headphones. Due to the chip shortage that was happening at the time of vehicle production, it was not possible to include wireless headphones with this system. Power on or off and you'll have a light indicator when they are on and the volume adjustment. Additional settings, you can turn the screen off by clicking screen off or by powering off from the hard button on the lower right hand corner. Another way to get to audio output for separate or synchronized. Customize the brightness and contrast of the display. To have the brightness and contrast of the rear displays be independent of the front display, Deselect synchronized for the display appearance. You can select light or dark mode for the rear entertainment screens, while the front screen has its own setting. Pretty cool. Accessibility will offer voice guidance at three levels, soft, normal, 
or loud. If you'd like to turn that off, just click to toggle off. And then all of the licensing information can be viewed here. My friend and amazing Lexus trainer, Frederick Anderson, came to film with me on this LX so that we could find some cool tips for you on the rear entertainment system. Here's what we learned. Some Android phones have Miracast, and even most Windows laptops have that feature. But make sure to check your device for compatibility before you want to use it on the rear entertainment system in your LX. Open the source menu on the rear entertainment screen and select Rear Miracast. Then take a look at your smartphone, and you may need to launch settings to access the Miracast software on your Android device. If so, just follow the steps on screen to pair and connect. You'll be able to mirror the content from your phone on the rear entertainment screen. Apple products have a variety of third-party apps that claim to be compatible for using Miracast, but we had varying degrees of successful connection with third-party apps. The best way we found to connect to an iPhone or an iPad was with the HDMI cord. Plug in your device, you'll select Rear HDMI from the Rear Entertainment screen source menu, and then launch your content right on screen. You'll find that some apps will allow you to operate the app or the content on the touch screen or to use your phone as a mouse. It just depends. You can open your favorite apps to stream video or TV, watch your favorite content from YouTube, your favorite news, shop, play games, you name it. Laptops and personal computers can also be connected with the rear HDMI cable. Just make sure to select the right cable for your device. Just keep in mind that apps and websites are always changing, so their operation in the vehicle might change too. If your smartphone is already connected to the vehicle for your driver profile, make sure to use a separate device for the rear entertainment system. For example, it's not possible for a phone to support wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for your driver profile and the main screen at the front of the vehicle and to simultaneously stream content or mirror content to the rear entertainment system. And the most important tip for the rear entertainment system, there is an ultimate veto power on the front screen. You can lock out the controls for the rear entertainment system through the settings on the main screen at the front of the vehicle, hopefully solving any potential conflict between siblings in the back seats. When storing cargo in the back of the vehicle, even installing child safety seats, Make sure to be very careful with how far back you adjust the front seats so that you don't inadvertently damage the screen of your rear entertainment system. All three second row seats on the bench seat configuration have top tethers for child safety seats. Both outboard second row seats have latch, the lower anchor points, for child safety seats. To use child locks to prevent the rear cabin doors from being opened from the inside, just slide the toggle down. To allow rear cabin passengers to open the back doors, make sure the child door lock is in the up position. You'll also see rear passenger seatbelt indicators on the dash and they'll clear as seatbelts are engaged. We are ready to move into the front cabin of your new LX. And the first thing that we're going to do is set up your Lexus driver profile. Having your driver profile connected gives you a much more customized experience in your Lexus with the new Lexus interface system. It's going to save and show your radio favorites, adjust the seat, side mirrors, and steering wheel for your driver position. It'll even turn on the connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on your phone. There are even more customized settings that your driver profile is connected to. So let's open up your Lexus app and set up your driver profile. You'll select your preferred language. 
Then enter your phone number. When you click send, this is going to send a link to your cell phone inviting you to download the Lexus app. If you've already downloaded the Lexus app, you can just ignore that text message and open your Lexus app. And if an update is available for the app, go ahead and do the update. Open your refreshed, updated app. Sign in if you have an existing or previous Lexus or Toyota account. If you already have an existing Lexus drivers or Lexus remote account from our previous app versions, go ahead and try to sign in with your previous account email address information. It will prompt you to reset your password if required or register if you need to create a new account. Click continue to registration. Go ahead and complete the full registration rather than signing in from a social media platform. Use your email address as your username and create your account and password. Once you're on the add vehicle screen, click add vehicle if you have more than one vehicle in your garage, push and hold on the car icon at the bottom center of your screen. Then click on the plus symbol in the top right corner to add your new vehicle. And then look toward the bottom of your phone for scan QR code. You'll notice the QR code ready and waiting on your Lexus screen. Click scan QR code and give permission for your camera to interact with the QR code if you have that prompt pop up on your phone. Then you'll be able to scan the QR code on the vehicle screen. Now on the vehicle, you'll see I've completed app setup. That means we have more work to do on our phone. So don't click that just yet. Wait for your phone to prompt you for the next steps. You'll see the vehicle information pop up on your phone screen. You can nickname your vehicle. You can also select your preferred servicing dealer if it doesn't automatically populate for you. Click Save Changes. And now you can review all of the connected services that are available, giving you the information about the complimentary trials that you have for each service. Click Continue, and we will accept our terms and data consent for those connected systems and trial periods. If you're not sure you want to register for the hotspot subscription with AT&T for a Wi-Fi data plan, go ahead and choose maybe later. And then confirm. Confirm and continue. Choose finish setup. Now we'll see that we are fully connected for our Lexus app and remote services. Let's go ahead and set up Bluetooth. The car is already ready. Click yes, come to settings on your device. Select Bluetooth and then look for the Lexus LX to pop up on screen. We'll touch right on the words Lexus LX and wait for our pairing prompts. Now we're going to have steps to click on, on the phone and the vehicle. Make sure to allow for favorites, contacts, call history. This is the primary device for my profile, so I'm going to say yes. I would also like to allow Apple CarPlay. So make sure that you are allowing the connected system for your phone, whether it's Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You just need to click on permission on the vehicle and the phone. Awesome. Now we have our primary driver profile connected. It's instantly launched our Apple CarPlay because that is the connected system on this type of phone. It's an iPhone. Our next step in setting up a driver profile is to link your selected key. That also means we need to get to the Lexus interface settings. Right now, we are in Apple CarPlay. In order to get back to Lexus interface, we just click Lexus. Our Lexus interface menu is always going to show on the left-hand side as long as you are in the Lexus interface system. To link the key, we confirm that our driver profile is active, we select personal info, scroll to link key. 
Now it is going to tell you that when you link a key to a profile, it's going to automatically be loaded at key detection. That means that when you unlock from the driver's door or you are starting the vehicle and you have your key with you in the driver's seat area, it's going to see that key. It's also going to see your paired device. So it has multiple ways to locate your driver profile. Now an important step for linking a key is to make sure you only have have your selected key in the vehicle. If you click to link a key and multiple keys are detected, the vehicle is going to be able to identify that. So go ahead and click OK and then remove the other keys from the vehicle. You can just put them outside of the vehicle. Now I have just my selected key in the vehicle. I've confirmed my profile is active and connected. Click link key. You'll hear a beep and then just wait a few seconds. It's going to toggle blue for on. So it just takes it a few seconds to locate that key. And now you can start customizing all kinds of things. The most important, of course, is going to be your driver position memory. Each saved driver profile can use all three driver position memory buttons. Make sure your profile is active. Go ahead and adjust your seat position forward, back, hip point up or down, raise or lower the front part of the seat cushion, and then extend the thigh support or retract. You can recline the seat back or bring it forward. You can also adjust lumbar support but keep in mind that lumbar is not saved with driver position memory. You can even raise or lower the position. To adjust the steering wheel, we do need to have the vehicle turned on. The steering wheel can tilt and telescope. Just use the toggle on the side of the steering column to move it away, toward you, down, and up. To adjust the side mirrors, select L for left or R for right, and then use the touchpad to get the position that you prefer. Once you have your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors in the position that you prefer, press set, let it go, and press your number, and then you'll hear a beep. The new driver position memory capabilities are much more advanced than ever before. Three driver profiles can be saved to the vehicle and each driver profile can use all three buttons. There's also an auto save feature for your driver position. So if you are driving and maybe you're on a long trip or something and you adjust your seat position, when you put the vehicle in park, it is going to memorize the last position that you drove in. So if you hop back in the car and you feel like the seat's a little bit different from your normal daily driving position, make sure your profile is active on the system and then just push the button to recall your driving position. You can press the button on the right to power fold the mirrors in or out. But a great tip, if you've power folded the mirrors in, Instead of pushing the button again to open them, push the auto button. They will open and engage auto mode. To turn auto folding mirrors on, make sure you see the green light. When the auto folding mirrors are turned on, the mirrors will fold in automatically when you lock your Lexus. The tilt angle of the mirrors while reversing is customizable. If you have a light on either mirror control button, that means the mirrors will tilt in reverse. Apply the brake and shift into reverse. You'll see the mirrors tilt down. To customize the tilt angle, select the mirror that you would like to adjust. Use the touchpad to make your adjustments, then put the vehicle back into park the mirrors will restore to the position that you set for your driving angle. Shift back into reverse to confirm the new setting. If you don't want the mirrors to tilt in reverse, just deselect so that you don't have a light on either button 
Taking a look at the other buttons in the driver's door handle, you can lock out passenger operation of windows or allow the passengers to operate the windows. You can lock the vehicle or unlock and then window button operation. Taking a look at the buttons on the left hand side of the steering wheel, we have our view monitor button. The panoramic 360 monitoring system uses multiple cameras located around the vehicle. One at the front under the Lexus logo, the rear backup camera, and one camera under each side mirror. Shifting into park, pushing the view monitor button, we have a full 360 overview and we have settings available in the settings menu bar on the left hand side. We can click the X to close out or click on the vehicle to change the view to a see-through view or overhead. We can pause and play. You can also just click on the screen to pause and play if you're wanting to get a better look at a particular spot. Our final item in the menu is the setting shortcut. Clicking on settings and we come to our camera view multi-terrain monitor setting screen. When you click on that, you're able to make additional setting customizations for the camera view. You can turn on and off cornering view. You can turn on and off the view underneath the vehicle. Now there aren't actually cameras underneath the vehicle, but you'll have a see-through view. You'll see the ghosted image on the left-hand side where it looks like we have an undercarriage view from our camera monitoring system and the system stitches together images from the cameras to make it look like as you're passing over something you're seeing what's underneath the LX. It's actually capturing footage from progressing forward or back and stitching those images together. It's a really cool technique. The Lexus Park Assist 3D display can also be turned on and off. You can customize the distance for your parking sensors to start recognizing an object. You can select near or standard for the front and rear of the vehicle. Just push OK to confirm your selection. Near the camera lens under the side mirrors, you'll also see something that looks like a sensor. It's actually a near invisible light that helps the system to see objects at night. And these lights are referred to as parking assist lighting. So it's like night view for your parking assist system that helps images to be projected onto the camera screen even at night. You can also customize the vehicle body color that shows up on screen. Just pick the color that you prefer to match your vehicle and select OK. Click camera view with the left facing arrow to return to our camera view screen. And now let's shift into drive and let me show you what that looks like. If your camera monitoring system does not automatically turn on, push your view button on the left-hand side of your dash below your air conditioning vent. We have additional settings available in our left side menu. You have your overhead view on the left-hand side. The right-hand side view can be customized by clicking the second item on the screen. You'll be able to click for a more narrow view, focusing on the views from the cameras mounted underneath the side view mirrors. If you press the view monitor button again, it will toggle you through to that narrow view turn off the view monitor and back on. It's like using this setting soft button or the X to close out. You're just toggling through with the hard button instead. When you're in the narrow view and you begin to turn the wheel, the system will pull back 
to show you more information. You'll also see the icon change in the menu bar on the left hand side. When the wheels are straight, you'll go back to the selected straight ahead view. Most people prefer the full view and the view that includes the dynamic lines moving forward. You can customize the lines that show by clicking on the line settings menu item in the middle of the menu screen on the left hand side. To have your camera view come up automatically, just click on the auto icon. Click again. If you see a line coming through the automatic selection, then you will have canceled the automatic mode so it won't turn on unless you press your view monitor button. Most people prefer to leave the setting in auto. When you get up to about seven miles per hour, your camera view will turn off and the screen will restore to whatever it was that you had on previously. Once again, we have a shortcut to our camera view setting screen at the bottom left of the menu. Taking a look at the new backup camera, we have our menu bar on the left hand side. You can toggle through view options for the large right side screen, either a wide view or a more straight back view. You can customize the backup camera guidelines. When you see the blue turn angle lines with the red line, that's just giving you an indication if you were to turn your wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right, what your intended path would be. And the red line is letting you know you're pretty close to your bumper, probably about six inches. Just select to talk through. You can hide all lines except the red line toggle again and this view allows you to have the dynamic intended path or turn angle lines. You also have a dynamic center line. That's the green dashed line that you see on the right hand side. The default view has dynamic yellow turn angle lines and blue straightaway lines. So the red line and the yellow lines will move with you, indicating your intended path. So to make sure that your wheels are straight, just line up the dynamic lines with the static blue lines and then put the vehicle in park. And of course, we have the shortcut back to our settings menu at the bottom of the menu bar. Coming back to the buttons on the left-hand side of the dash odometer and trip meter button. When you push the odometer and trip meter button, you'll see it toggle through trip A, trip B. You'll see a wrench indicating how many miles you have left until your next oil change. Now keep in mind that you'll service every 5,000 miles or six months, whichever comes first, but you'll typically do an oil change every 10,000 miles or 12 months whichever comes first. Just press and hold the odometer trip meter button to zero out trip A or trip B. You can increase or decrease the brightness of the lights on your instrument panel. Press the up arrow to make it more bright and the down arrow to make it more dim. Coming down for our button to operate the power back door. To operate the power back door from inside, push and hold the power back door button. If it beeps and doesn't open, it just means that the back door is locked. Go ahead and press the unlock button in the driver's door handle. Push and hold again to close. When the power back door is operating, you'll see an indicator on the dash. When the operation is complete, it will clear. The button to deactivate the auto engine start stop feature that is on the new turbocharged Lexus LX. Like many other auto manufacturers, Lexus now has a stop start feature to cycle the engine off when the vehicle is at idle. That means when you come to a stop in your LX, the engine will turn off if 
it can continue to support the climate control system and any of the other accessories that you have operating on the vehicle. It's actually much smoother of a stop-start process than I was anticipating. In fact, I've talked to a few people who drive this vehicle now and they didn't even realize that they had the feature. The button is kind of tucked away on the dash on the left-hand side and they just didn't notice it. So I do recommend that you drive it for a while See what it feels like when that turns off and on. If you've ever driven a hybrid vehicle and you know that they typically will cycle the gasoline engine off when the vehicle comes to a stop, it's very similar to that concept. When the vehicle comes to a stop, the gasoline engine will cycle off. When you begin to lift your foot off of the brake, the gasoline engine comes back on. And because there's no interruption to any of the other features that you're operating on your vehicle, especially climate control, it's not going to always shut off. It's only going to shut off if it can. It is about improving fuel economy and reducing noise pollution when the vehicle is at idle. If it bothers you, you can press the stop start engine off button. You'll see an indicator light on the dash on the lower right hand side. That disables that function for that drive cycle. It will reset when you turn the vehicle off. If you see a message letting you know that the vehicle will turn off if it's parked and idle for one hour, you can either allow it to automatically turn off or use the left side arrows to toggle down and make a selection to allow the engine to continue to stay on. Once you've made your selection, Go ahead and press the OK button to clear. A small storage cubby. And coming down again, you have the manual release for the fuel door and the hood. Coming over to headlamp operation, twist the dial down for DRL off, daytime running lights off. Actually, everything off. Twist up for auto up again for parking lights and daytime running lights and twist all the way to the top for manual low beam headlight selection. Coming back down to auto or off if you needed to turn them off. Most people prefer to leave them in auto. Automatic high beams are operated by pushing the button on the end. You'll see a green light turn on letting you know that the high beams are active. Just push the headlamp stock forward to manually turn on the high beams. Your fog lamps are operated with the toggle. Just click up for fog lamps to come on when the low beam headlights are on or down for them to remain off. Coming over to the right for windshield wiper operation, the position of the stock determines the operation mode. Coming up to the top, for mist, and they'll drop back down to the off position. Come down one click from off for auto. Once you're in auto, you can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers with the dial. They're the most sensitive at the top, which means it takes less water to activate. Coming down for less sensitivity, and all the way at the bottom, they are the least sensitive, so it would take quite a bit more water to get them to activate. One thing to note, you don't have to try to line up this dash mark with the word auto because you're putting them in the automatic mode and then adjusting the auto sensitivity. So don't worry about that. Bring the stock down once more for steady low and all the way at the bottom for steady high. High, low, auto, off, one swipe for mist. Coming back to off, click down again to leave them in auto. Make sure you know how to control the windshield wiper so that if you go through a car wash, you can turn them off. The rear wiper is either off, intermittent, or on. Just twist the dial. You'll pull it toward you to spray and clean the front windshield and push away for the rear. You'll also have a new rear backup camera lens washer, and it's linked to the rear windshield washer operation. 
When you activate the rear windshield washer, it's going to automatically clean your backup camera lens. The LX has paddle shifters for a manual shifting mode. Shift into drive and then move the shifter to the left to access manual mode. You can now actually upshift or downshift right on the gearbox or use the paddle shifters. Shifting up on the right and downshift on the left. To shift back into your normal drive mode, just move the gear shift back over to the drive position. Let's take a look at the buttons on the steering wheel and the features that they operate. Starting out on the left-hand side, all of the arrow buttons and the OK button operate the multi-information display on your dash. You can move left, right, and on some screens, up and down. When you've highlighted an item that you would like to open or maybe even toggle a feature on or off, you'll use the OK button. If you'd like to go back a screen or clear a message, use the return arrow button. Let's take a look at each item on the display. The information menu contains a lot of fuel economy information. Right now we're looking at current and average miles per gallon after reset. You'll notice the scroll bar on the right hand side. That does mean we have additional screens. We can arrow down for our second drive information screen with our range, how many miles we have left on this tank of gas, and the average speed arrowing down again to an eco indicator. This will light up in the eco range when you're driving in a fuel efficient way. Arrowing down again for our tire pressure, including the full size spare tire located underneath the rear of the vehicle. Once this vehicle is driven up to speed, it will show the PSI for all five tires. Arrowing down again, and we have a blank screen. Arrow once more, and we just loop right back around to the top. Arrowing to the right, and we move from information to navigation. We have our compass. Arrow to the right again, and we have an audio screen. Notice now we have up and down arrows again. That means we can scroll through our sources that are available on the vehicle. When you see streaming services like Apple Music or Amazon Music, those do require a subscription and a Wi-Fi hotspot data package from AT&T. Arrowing to the right again, and we have our driving support screen. We'll take a look at this more closely when we look at the buttons on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Arrowing to the right again, messages about service or even a low fuel warning can appear here. Arrowing to the right for settings. Working in the settings menu, we're going to use the up and down arrows to move through our list of features. When you want to select something, make sure that the highlighter is on that item, and then you'll push the OK button. The OK button will either toggle something on or off, or it will open an additional menu that has other settings for that particular feature. So go ahead and arrow up or down until you're on the lane trace assist icon. It looks like a vehicle leaving the lane. You'll see that same icon on a button on the right hand side of the steering wheel to turn the feature on or off. But in this case, we're going to be customizing the settings through the settings menu. Go ahead, highlight the icon, and then push OK. You'll see that same icon again because the top three items are customizations for Lane Trace Assist. We can turn lane centering on or off. You can customize the alert, so if the vehicle is leaving a lane and you don't have your blinker on, you will get either an audible alert or the steering wheel vibration alert. You can adjust the sensitivity, high or standard, and you can turn the sway warning on or off. 
Sway warning will pop up if you've had multiple corrections in a row. The vehicle is concerned that you may be a fatigued driver and it will suggest that it's time to take a rest. You can also customize the sway sensitivity. Low, high, or standard, which is the default. Pressing the go back button to exit this menu item, we can come down to blind spot monitor, toggling that off or on. The blind spot monitor is the indicator that lights up in your side view mirrors when another vehicle is located in your blind spot. It's going to flash if you have your blinker on with the intention of moving in that direction to give you an additional warning not to move over yet because you have someone in your blind spot. Arrowing down, you can turn on and off your park assist. If you turn off the parking assist feature, you will see the park assist off icon on the lower left-hand side of the dash. RCTA stands for rear cross traffic alert. When you're backing up, if the sensors detect a vehicle crossing at the rear of your vehicle, you will have an audible and visual alert. You can turn that off and then it will tell you RCTA off on the left hand side. I recommend leaving that on. That has saved me in parking lots more times than I can count. RCD stands for Rear Camera Detection. That's looking for pedestrians when you're backing up in conjunction with your rear view camera. Arrowing down to this icon, this is actually an auto braking feature. It's called PKSB or Parking Support Brake. It works in conjunction with your rear cross traffic alert and your parking sensors. So basically parking sensors and rear cross traffic alert make sounds. They beep at you. They give you warnings and indications. The auto braking feature takes it a step further to actually apply the brake if you are not braking when you're getting those warnings. The main control for the head up display, on or off, and then the adjustment for the brightness and position. Push OK using the left and right arrows, and then you can make the HUD more bright or dim. And using the up and down arrows, you can raise or lower the head up display. Pushing the go back button to return to the previous screen and coming down to units. You can change the meter calculation from miles to kilometers and then arrowing down to curve speed reduction. You can adjust this to off, low, or high. Curve speed reduction is going to engage when you have adaptive cruise control turned on and engaged. Arrowing down for PCS, the pre-collision system. You can turn it off. If you do, it gives you an extra warning of are you sure you want to turn off pre-collision system. It is going to require you to arrow up and then push OK if you would want to do this. Then it's going to tell you again, hey, your pre-collision system is off. You can clear that message by pushing go back. When you turn the vehicle off and back on, it's going to turn the pre-collision system back on for you. So rather than turn the feature off, arrow down and consider adjusting the sensitivity level as you start to get used to this type of safety feature on your vehicle. Most people prefer the standard, which is the mid-level sensitivity. Arrowing down to vehicle settings, push OK to open, and these are some additional adjustments and customizations that we can make for the safety features we were just reviewing. You can adjust the brightness for your blind spot monitor, dim or bright, and you can adjust the sensitivity. Four, three, two, one. There are four levels of sensitivity. Most people prefer level three or four. Pressing the go back button, you can adjust the volume for your parking support alert. One, two, three. You can also adjust the rear cross traffic alert volume and the rear camera detection volume. 
arrowing down for our road sign assist feature. This feature is looking for stop signs, yield signs, right of way signs, and speed limit signs. It uses the front facing camera to look for those signs. You can turn that feature off or on and you can make customizations for speed limit. Do you want no notification if you've gone over the speed limit that it's seeing, a visual only or visual and audible? Most people prefer visual only. Make your selection and push OK. Then you can choose your notification level. Do you want to be notified when you've gone one mile, three miles, or five miles an hour over the speed limit? It's not an intrusive notification. It just highlights around the speed limit sign with kind of an orange color, just to attract your attention a little bit to try to get you to slow down. Coming down to other signs, you can choose to have no notification, visual only, or visual and audible. Other signs are going to be things more like right of way signs. Push and go back and go back again, arrowing down for additional head up display customizations. Push OK. You can choose what your TAC information will look like. Do you want blank, eco indicator, or the tachometer. Arrowing down for HUD driving support, push OK to open. We have navigation information, driving assist information, the compass, and audio. All of these items can be turned off or on, allowing them to appear or not appear in your head up display. Pushing go back, you can come down to HUD rotation, push OK. Then you can use the right or left arrows to tilt the HUD until you have it where you want it, clockwise or counterclockwise. Pushing the go back button, go back again, arrowing down to the engine stop start feature. You can select standard or extended and then push OK. When standard is selected, it will balance stop and start operation and AC compressor output. When you select extended, it will prolong stop and start operation and reduce AC compressor output. Considering summers in Texas, we might want to keep it on standard. Pushing the go back button, arrowing down, an additional safety and convenience item is the rear seat reminder. It's triggered by opening a rear door before you get into the vehicle to drive. When you turn the vehicle off, you'll have a check rear seat reminder. You can choose to have the rear seat reminder that we saw off or on, coming down for power back door customization. You can disable the power back door by turning it off. Arrowing down for hands free, that's turning off your kick sensor. Leave that on, I love that. Arrowing down for volume control and then push the OK button to make your selections. Three, two, one for the beeps that it makes when you're operating it. Pushing go back, arrowing down for the tire pressure warning setting, push OK, and you can push OK again to set pressure. Changing the wheels, these are items that technicians would use if your wheels or tires are being serviced. And setting the units. Push OK, and you'll see three options, KPA, PSI, which is the default for our area, and bar type. We'll leave it on PSI, which is standard in our area. Pressing go back, go back again. Arrowing down again, our final items, scheduled maintenance. Again, technicians would come in to reset the data after the vehicle's been serviced. Pushing go back. And remember, we have two different types of maintenance, standard scheduled maintenance at 5,000 miles or six months, and then our oil maintenance at 
10,000 miles or once a year, whichever comes first. Push and go back. I like to arrow down again so that we loop right back around to the top of the settings menu item for vehicle settings. And now press go back and come down to meter settings. Push OK to open. We can choose English, Spanish, or French for the display language. Push and go back. Another selection for units, kilometers, or miles. That will vary depending on your region. You can customize the speedometer for an analog display, digital and analog combination display, or digital only. Arrowing down and we can customize our drive information screens. Push OK and we can decide do we want to keep the current bar type and average fuel economy after reset? Sure, those seem pretty good. Let's arrow back and let's change selecting drive info 2, pushing OK. Let's change that average speed after reset. Push OK. And then we have an opportunity to choose what we want. So rather than an average speed calculation, it might be nice to select elapsed time after start. How long has the vehicle been running? Pushing OK, pushing Go Back. And if we'd like to see that change, let's push Go Back again to exit meter settings and just do a quick arrow to the right to our information display, arrow down, and there it is. We have our range and our current trip time. Pretty cool. Left arrow shortcut back to our settings. Push OK to open meter settings. Come back down. We just customize Drive Info 2. Arrow down, and we can choose to turn on or off different items that can pop up on our display. Intersection guidance phone, audio operation, volume, the duration message for the stop start feature and the auto engine shut off and the status of the stop start feature. Make sure to note that these are just customizations. They don't disable the feature and the adjust brightness screen that we saw before. Arrowing down to return to the top, pushing go back, we can turn off or on the eco pop-up light that happens as you drive. And this again would only happen when you're driving in a fuel efficient way, you'll see the eco indicator pop up on screen. You can always return to the default settings by selecting default settings, pushing okay, and then it will ask you, are you sure you really want to do this? You can select yes and push okay if you would prefer that. Push and go back, arrow down so you loop right back to the top, go back again, arrow down so you loop right back to the top. If you press the go back button and you don't go back anywhere, that means you're as far back as you can get. So either move left or right until you're on the screen that you prefer. Coming down to the telephone button to answer or end a call, adjusting the volume up or down for telephone or radio, and your voice command button. When you push and release, you'll be using your Lexus Assistant to operate items on the vehicle. When you push and hold, you'll be using your phone's assistant, either Siri for iPhones or OK Google for Android phones. Coming over to the right-hand side, our top items are for driving assist features. To turn cruise control on, or off, press the cruise control button. When you reach the speed that you'd like to cruise, push set. You can increase or resume with the plus button, decrease or set with the set and minus button. You can cancel by clicking the cancel button or tapping on the brake. To set your following distance for radar cruise control, toggle through with the button on the right hand side. You'll see indicator bars on the dash, long range, mid-range, and close range. When you turn on cruise control, you'll see the message that Radar Cruise is active and you'll see the adaptive cruise control icon on the left-hand side. Push again and it will turn off. 
If you push and hold the button rather than pushing and releasing, you'll be using constant speed cruise control rather than radar. That means that you'll set your speed, but you won't set a following distance and you'll be in charge of the brake. Push and release to turn the feature off. The Lane Tracing Assist button allows you to use steering assist only or steering assist and lane centering. Push and hold to turn off Lane Trace Assist completely and you'll see the icon turn off on the left hand side. Push and release to turn it on. Mode will toggle you through your audio sources, FM, AM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. Check this out. If you push and hold the mode button, it will mute your audio or pause if it's possible to pause the content. Just push and hold again to play. Using the arrows on the lower right hand side of the steering wheel, you can move through the saved radio favorites. Just arrow through your list. Favorite one, two, three, etc. We'll talk about how to save radio favorites and change their order when we go through our Lexus interface audio system. Moving up, there are two possible rear view mirrors on the LX, the standard optical mirror or the optional digital rear view mirror. You'll see three buttons for home link, garage door and gate operation. And the button in the center will allow you to turn on or off the auto dimming feature for your rear view mirror. It is an anti-glare feature, so it is going to turn back on automatically the next time you start the vehicle if you've turned it off. For more information about digital rear view mirror, make sure to check out our Tech Tip Tuesday. Coming up to the controls on the ceiling, we also have a glasses storage case, touch operated dome lights, or Push the button to turn all the dome lights on or off or push the door mode button so that they will automatically turn on when you open a door. You can open or close the moonroof and tilt the back of the moonroof up or down. The close button will close the glass. You can manually close the shade. The SOS button is located behind this door. Your Safety Connect system comes with a complimentary trial period with your new vehicle, and that will be set up when we set up our driver profile. If you need roadside or emergency assistance, open the door and push the button to speak to an operator. The LX now has a new feature that is a motion sensor that's built into the alarm system. When you turn the vehicle off and then you turn off the theft sensor, you'll have a message on the dash, theft sensor turned off. And that's the motion sensor attached to the alarm system. Push again, you'll have the message, theft sensor turned on. At the front of the dash near the windshield, you'll see the alarm light. When it's flashing, that means the vehicle is unlocked. When it lights solid, the vehicle is locked. Right nearby, you'll see the sensor for the automatic headlights. That's what lets the vehicle know when it's time to turn the headlights on when you have them in auto mode. It also controls the automatic switching from day mode to night mode for your main display. Now we're ready to dive into Lexus interface. Looking across the top right hand corner, we see the wireless charger icon, the DCM or system connection icon the bars of service for our connected phone, the current battery charge level for our connected phone, and our Bluetooth connection, and then of course, the clock. Our Lexus interface menu is always on the left side of the screen. The shortcut to your phone's system, like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, will be at the very top, 
as long as your driver profile is connected. Or if you've paired a device as a guest and you've given permission for your phone system to be used in the vehicle. So if you don't see that, it means that your profile is not connected or your permissions have not been turned on for that connection. The next icon is for Lexus Drive Connect Navigation. Then we have the music notes, the shortcut to the audio system. The phone icon will bring you to a placeholder that shortcuts you to your phone's version of the telephone operation or the Lexus version of your phone operation if you aren't using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The car icon takes you to vehicle settings operation and the gear takes you to the full settings menu. There are three ways to access voice commands. Since Lexus Interface is a voice first system, all you have to do is say, hey Lexus. You can even say, hi Lexus, hello Lexus, or okay Lexus. You can also use the talk button on the steering wheel and even a soft button right on screen. Let's take a quick look at each different way of accessing the voice command system. To use the talk button on the left hand side of the steering wheel for Lexus interface, you'll push and release the talk button. When you push and release the talk button, it's the same as saying, hey Lexus. Push and hold to cancel. Get directions to Starbucks. I found 15 results. Tune to 97.5 FM. Tuning to 97.5 FM. I want to listen to First Wave on satellite radio. Tuning to First Wave on XM. To interact by voice with your telephone's assistant, either use your phone's wake word like Hey Siri or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel. With the Lexus system, you push and release to activate and push and hold to cancel. With your phone's assistant, it's the opposite. Push and hold to activate mm -hmm. and push and release to cancel. Another way to access voice command is with the soft buttons on screen. Just touch the magnifying glass icon. When you're driving, the magnifying glass will change to an image of a microphone. To cancel, either say cancel by voice, click the X on the top left corner, or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel. If you're using Apple CarPlay, touch and hold hmm? on the icons on the lower left-hand corner. Cancel. Now let's take a look at Apple CarPlay. When you have a connected device with the permissions turned on for Apple CarPlay, you'll see the shortcut for the Apple CarPlay icon on the very top left corner of your screen. If we click on Apple CarPlay, we have our Apple CarPlay menu on the left side of the screen. You'll have a digital clock on the top left-hand corner. You'll show your bars of connection and battery charge level. You'll have three recently used apps, the top app will be about navigation. The next app item is about entertainment. You'll see music, podcasts, or audiobook app shortcuts, depending on what you recently used. The third recently used app category is about communication. In this case, we just sent a text, so our messaging app is showing. You'll see dots along the bottom of the screen. That means you have additional pages of apps. The app order can be customized in your phone settings. On the bottom left-hand corner, you'll have two view options available. The home screen or access the apps menu showing compatible apps from your iPhone. The home screen shortcut icon takes you to the Apple CarPlay home screen. Items on this screen will vary. You'll see 
a map on the left-hand side, Apple Map as default. You also have additional navigation information on the top right tile. Just click to open and it will shortcut you to the item you selected. Your music or entertainment information will be on the right-hand side, depending on what audio content you're listening to from your device. And then if you have an upcoming event in your calendar, it will appear on the lower right tile. Hey Siri, put an event on my calendar to pick up dry cleaning at noon today. I scheduled your event for today from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. The event is called Pick Up Dry Cleaning. When you're on your home screen, you'll see the shortcut to your apps menu on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Just click to open. You can select any app to open that app content. When you receive a text message notification, you can either click on the message notification or ask Siri to read it for you. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Read my last text from Ava. You have recent messages from Ava. Ava said, hi, Melissa. Thank you. I hope you have a great weekend. Would you like to reply? Yes. Reply, thanks so much. Your reply to Ava says, thanks so much. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. Just remember that if Siri reads a message back to you and asks if you're ready to send, you can say change it, you can say add to it, or you can send or cancel. So you can use the touchscreen to interact with your message function. You could read, review, change it, or just send right away if you don't want to hear the whole replay of your message. You can make a phone call in the exact same way. Hey Siri, call Sarah. Did you mean Sarah? Mobile? Yes. Calling Sarah. Mobile. If a contact has multiple types of phone numbers, you can even be more specific. You can ask for them to call that person cell, work, home. The more specific you are, the more efficient it is to place your call or send a message. Hey Siri, get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas using Google Maps. Here's what I found. Getting directions to Target using Google Maps. Just touch the item on the screen to open. If you don't designate a navigation app, Apple CarPlay will default to Apple Maps. Here's how that works. Hey Siri, Get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Okay, here's what I found. Starting route to Target. Proceed to the route. Hmm? Cancel navigation. Okay, I've stopped navigating. From your apps menu to go back to Lexus interface, just click Lexus. For more details about using Apple CarPlay in your Lexus, make sure to check out our Tech Tip Tuesday series on Apple CarPlay. Now let's take a look at how Android Auto operates in the vehicle. Click on the shortcut icon for Android Auto at the very top of your Lexus interface menu. The Android Auto feature will show all compatible apps from your connected device. If you'd like to scroll to see additional apps, you can use the arrows or swipe on screen. Your home screen button is on the top left corner. If you have a destination already selected on your phone, you'll see it automatically pop up on the right side of the screen. To open a map to the large screen side or full screen if capable, click on Maps. Click the X to end your route or end your navigation by voice command. When you're using the Google Mobile Assistant, make sure to wait for the beep. Okay, Google. You can wake your Google Assistant in three different ways. Either push and hold with the voice command button on the steering wheel and click 
the voice command button on the steering wheel to cancel or push and hold the microphone button on screen, the lower left hand corner. And click to cancel or just use the wake phrase and wait for the beeps. OK, Google. How's the weather today? Today in spring, there will be thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 68 and a low of 64. Currently it's 67 degrees and cloudy. But OK, Google. Get directions to Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Target is seven minutes from your location by car in light traffic. Once you have your destination on screen, you can just start to drive or click on the lower left-hand corner to begin your navigation. OK, Google. Send a text to Sarah. Sarah, sure. What's the message? Hope you're having a great day. Sending your message saying hope you're having a great day. OK, Google. Call Target in the Woodlands, Texas. Calling Target. To come back to the Lexus interface system, click your home button and click Lexus. For more details about using Android Auto in your Lexus, make sure to check out our Tech Tip Tuesdays all about Android Auto. Now let's take a look at our Drive Connect cloud-based navigation system. Keep in mind that Drive Connect is a bundle of services, the cloud-based mapping system, the destination assist live operator, where you can actually just say, hey Lexus, call destination assist. Calling destination assist. And then we can get help from a live operator. Recorded and monitored for quality purposes. Please hold while I connect you to a response specialist. The Drive Connect bundle also includes your intelligent assistant. The intelligent assistant is the Lexus voice assistant on steroids. It is so smart, it is actually learning. It is also connected to the cloud. Some other items to be aware of on screen. You can choose the map view a tilted 3D view, the 2D view facing the direction that you're currently facing, or the north up 2D view, which will have the map oriented with north at the top. Most people prefer the 2D or 3D direction facing view so that the map turns as you turn. Using two fingers, you can tilt or bring it back to 2D. You can move the map to explore. You can pinch to zoom out or pull apart to zoom in. If you have moved around on the map, click recenter to bring you back to your location. You can also click the plus or minus to zoom or just ask Lexus. Hey Lexus, zoom in on the map. OK, zooming in. Selecting more options, you can turn off or on your traffic flow information. You can click to call destination assist if you didn't want to do it by voice command. And you can shortcut to the navigation settings. Clicking about will give you information about the systems being used with the cloud-based maps. On the lower right-hand corner, you can mute your navigation audio or turn the sound back on. You can end your route by clicking end or opening your route information details and clicking end trip or by voice command. To end your trip by voice command, try this. Hey Lexus, cancel my trip. Canceling trip. Let's enter an address 
in the Lexus Drive Connect navigation system by voice command. Hey Lexus. What can I do for you? Get directions to 12000 Katy Freeway, Houston, Texas. I found 12,000 Katy Freeway. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to 12,000 Katy Freeway. Proceed to the highlighted route. Hey Lexus, cancel my navigation. Canceling trip. When you aren't driving, you can type on screen to search for a point of interest or even enter an address by typing into the keyboard. Click on the magnifying glass, then click on the search bar. Then you can start typing in the address or a business name, and you'll see suggestions across the top that you can choose from. Select the item that you want, and then click to open and start your navigation. A great shortcut to destinations is accessed right on screen. Just click on the magnifying glass or the microphone if the vehicle is in motion. Then touch destinations on the right hand side of the search bar. If you have set up your home or work locations in your Lexus app, they'll appear here. If you haven't set up the shortcut for home or work, it will appear grayed out and it'll say that the item hasn't been added. Make sure to open your destinations in your Lexus app and then customize those features. The favorites that have been saved for your driver profile will appear under favorites as long as your driver profile is the active profile in the system. Just click to go back. You can see recent searches and items that have been sent to the car. If you haven't used the Google location send to car feature yet through the Lexus app, then you won't have anything on this list. Scrolling down and you'll see shortcuts for popular points of interest, food, fuel, parking, and hospitals. And don't forget, you can always access this by voice command. Click the X to close. Hey Lexus. What do you want to do? Show my navigation favorites. Awesome. Hey Lexus, go home. I found 9360 Grogan's Mill Road. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to 9360 Grogan's Mill Road. Proceed to the highlighted route. Hey Lexus, cancel navigation. Canceling trip. This is what happens if you haven't set up your home or work address in your Lexus app. Hey Lexus, get directions to work. Sorry, I could not find a saved address for work. Please set up favorites in your Lexus app to enable this feature. So even though she says to set up favorites in your Lexus app, you're specifically going to set up your work address or your home address for those shortcuts. If you'd like to use the Lexus voice command system to navigate to a route, you can do that. Hey Lexus, get directions to Starbucks. I found 15 results. The first is Starbucks at Rayford Road. Would you like to go to that one? No. The next one is Starbucks at Grogan's Mill Road. Would you like to go there? Yes. If you're not driving, you can also review the list on screen Starbucks. and just click on the item that you would like. Proceed to the highlighted route. But if you're driving, let the system prompt you with the options and then choose the location you want by voice. You can save this location as a favorite. It's important to note that even though you can save favorites right in the system on the vehicle, in order to save your home or work location or manage your favorites list, you'll want to do that in the Lexus app. Open the app and then click Find in the menu on the lower right hand corner of your app. Select Destinations to open the My Destinations menu. Then you can customize your address for home and work, manage your favorites list, send locations to your Lexus, and even view recent destination searches. Now let's come back to the map.
choose the right facing arrow to review your route. Scroll to open alternative routes. Select to hide and click go Proceed now. to the highlighted route. Once you have a highlighted route on the screen, there are a few additional things that you can do. You can expand or shrink your route details. You can open your destination information so that you can review the address, how many miles away it is, how long it's going to take for you to get there. You can end the trip, add a stop, Target in the Woodlands, Texas. I found 15 results near the Woodlands, Texas. The first is Target Grocery at 1100 Lake Woodlands Drive. Would you like to go to that one? Yes. Would you like to add it as a stop or start a new trip? Add it as a stop. Adding Target Grocery as a stop. Proceed to the highlighted route. Now we have two destinations on our route. If we click on the drop down arrow, we'll see that our first stop will be Target and our next stop will be the restaurant. If we'd like to edit our stops, we click edit. You can grab the handlebars and move your stops to the order that you prefer. So if you would like to go to eat before you go grocery shopping, which is generally a good idea, go ahead and switch the order of your destinations. Proceed to the highlighted route. Click save and then she will take care of the rest. Sharing an ETA requires that your phone is connecting through Bluetooth rather than being used for an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. So if you click share and you see this message, no device connected, that's all that means. So you would switch your connection from Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to Bluetooth in order to share your ETA if you're using the Lexus Maps. If you're using your maps from Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, those navigation apps have their own way to share an ETA to a destination with contacts in your phone book. Just click OK to clear that message. If you'd like to share your ETA, click Share ETA and then choose the contact that you would like to share with and then you'll confirm what you're sharing. Okay, and now Ava will receive that message. Expand our trip information. Even though you can end your trip on screen, my favorite way, of course, is by voice command. Hey Lexus, cancel route. Canceling trip. Nice and easy. If you receive a low fuel notification on screen, you can click on the message to view a list of nearby gas stations. Select the one that you prefer and your navigation system will route you there. Let's take a look at our audio system. When the system is turned off, you'll see the message audio off in the top left corner and enable audio in the center of the display. That means you can just press enable audio or press the power and volume dial to turn the system on. The new Lexus interface system uses favorites rather than radio presets. You can save 20 radio favorites. There's not a tuner dial to select stations on this new version of the audio system. You can direct tune, however. Click tune in the audio menu, select AM, satellite, or FM, and then type in your station and click tune to station. Then the station will begin to play. If you know the numbers of your radio station, you can either type them in or you can give them by voice command. Hey Lexus, tune to the bridge on satellite radio. Tuning to the bridge on XM. Then, once you see that your station is playing, you can click on the long card on the bottom and open the station full screen. So you can either use the wake words, Hey Lexus, or push and release the talk button on the steering wheel. Tune to 97.5 FM. Tuning to 97.5 FM. 
If you're not sure of the numbers of a station or the name of a satellite radio channel, you can come to your different radio types, FM radio, for example. You can see recently played station cards, or you can see all available stations depending on the area where you're located. You can also sort based on the type of music that you would like to listen to and see the stations that play that content so that you can choose what you would like. Push and go back. You'll see that the AM radio selections are set up in the same way with recently played at the top and then all available station cards are on the right or sort by type and then look for the station that you prefer. The satellite radio selection is a little bit different. Satellite radio has been sorting stations by genre for a very long time. So a new item is this recommended for you feature. So this is going to be based on content that you have listened to and it's going to make suggestions for you. Or you can sort content by type, choosing from music and then pick a genre or sports and focus in on a particular sport or college so that you can customize your content. Or you can view the channel cards for all available satellite radio stations. You can also review your listening history. Clicking radio to go back. One of the most important things for Sirius XM is to know how to locate the radio ID. The easiest way is to be on the radio screen, then click Tune, choose Sirius XM as your audio source for tuning, and just click the number zero. Your radio ID will appear on screen here. The only time that this method of locating the radio ID isn't accessible is if you are actively on a phone call through the vehicle. If you're on a phone call, you can still find your radio ID. Make sure to go through settings. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Then you'll have the customer care phone number for Sirius XM right at the top and your radio ID just below. On satellite radio, you can choose to learn about related content and receive suggestions for other stations that you might like. And you can request to be notified if this artist or if this song is playing on another station. Check the box and then click OK to save. If you need to manage the customizations that you've made, Click Manage and you'll be able to shortcut to that part of our settings. So right now we have one alert enabled. If we want to edit, click Edit. You can either delete individual items or delete all. Come to Manage and if the vehicle is in Park, you'll be able to see the content that you've customized. If the vehicle is in drive, that customization is not available. In fact, there are a lot of settings that you won't be able to access when the vehicle is in drive or in motion. Coming back to our music screen, when you see the HD logo light up in orange, and then you'll see numbers after it, that lets you know that this is an HD radio station. That means they have their main analog station, that has a digital overlay to boost their sound quality, but they also have digital programming. So if we just go up one, we are now on this station's second programmed channel, which happens to actually just be a digital channel. Now we're on HD2 for this station. Coming back to the main station, 104.1, HD1, this is their main station. You can even see the available HD stations in the tile format when you scroll through the station list. To save favorites, once the station is playing, click the heart, and that means you've added the favorite. You can click undo really quickly if you made a mistake, no problem, but you could also just click the heart to remove that favorite. 
look at your favorites in list view, click edit. You can click on the minus to remove a favorite. So you have multiple ways to remove a favorite. When you're finished editing from the list, click done editing. Once you have favorites saved and you're in list view, you can organize those favorites and put them in whatever order you prefer. You can grab the handlebar to rearrange them. Just touch and hold on the bars, drag that where you want it, and it's automatically saved. So if you push radio and you go back to your main radio screen, you'll now see your radio favorites in the order that you saved them. If you click sources, you'll notice that radio is now considered its own source. When we used to go to sources, we would choose AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth. Well, now radio is its own source. And then once you're in radio, you would choose AM, FM, or satellite. Coming back to sources, Bluetooth is going to be the phone's Bluetooth device for Bluetooth connected music or audio content from your phone. When you see Apple Music, and Amazon Music listed here. These are streaming services that require a subscription to that service. They also require the Wi-Fi hotspot data subscription through AT&T. And you link these music accounts through your Lexus app. Coming back to the music notes. And that's your Lexus interface audio system and click on the phone icon to open our telephone system on screen. There are two different versions of the telephone system. One version is if you're using your phone through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The other version is if you've chosen to connect your phone to Bluetooth only. Let's take a look at both. You can shortcut to the device list and manage your devices to manage your phone device list. That gives you a quick and easy way to come back and reselect for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. You can choose to forget your device or come up to manage devices and add an additional device or switch from one device to another if you have multiple phones paired to your vehicle. Most people will use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for telephone operation. If you have left Apple CarPlay, for example, go to the audio screen or use Lexus navigation and you see the Lexus interface menu, you can either use voice command to go back to your phone or just push the telephone icon. If your phone is connected for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you'll see a shortcut back to that version of your telephone screen. So this is what it looks like for Apple CarPlay. Just click on the shortcut, taking you directly to your phone feature on your connected device. So now we are in phone feature for Apple CarPlay for this phone. So we have all of our normal Apple CarPlay and phone capabilities, phone favorites, recents, contacts, the keypad, and even voicemail. To interact by voice with your telephone's assistant, either use your phone's wake word like, hey Siri, or push and hold the talk button on the steering wheel. You can make calls and send text messages from any screen. You don't actually even need to be in the phone screen on the main display. Just use your voice commands. Clicking on our app menu in Apple CarPlay, clicking on Lexus, and coming back to the Lexus interface menu. But there is also a way to switch to using Bluetooth only, so you won't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto features or apps showing on your screen. This is going to be similar to our previous multimedia system. Now let's take a look at how the Bluetooth only phone connection operates. That means we're going to come to settings, Bluetooth and devices, select our connected phone, and we're going to turn off Apple CarPlay and turn on Bluetooth phone and audio media. Now click connect and the Bluetooth selection will be complete. Choose our phone icon and now we see our Bluetooth only phone operation menu. Favorites, contacts, 
recent calls, the keypad, and text messages for the Bluetooth connection. Now, of course, my favorite way to interact with the phone, whether it's through Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, is going to be by voice command. So let's do a Bluetooth voice command phone call. Hey, Lexus, call Ava. Which of Ava's numbers do you want to call? Mobile. Calling Ava on mobile. To send a text through the Bluetooth system, just ask Lexus. Hey, Lexus. Send a text to Ava. Which number do you want to message? Mobile. Please dictate your message. I hope you're having a great day. Your message says, I hope you're having a great day. Would you like to send this? Yes. So we could shortcut and click send, or we could also click cancel. When this screen is active, you could click send message if you wanted to send another message. What do you message. want your message to say? I had a drop down notification that we've received a text from Ava. Let's try something. Hey Lexus, read my last text from Ava. Hello, it's a beautiful day. Hope you're having a great one. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want your message to say? Thanks so much, you too. I just shared my ETA with you for my trip to Target, period. So cool. Your message says, thanks so much, you too. I just shared my ETA with you for my trip to Target. Would you like to send this? Yes. So she didn't quite get all of my message. That's just an example of how you can text with Bluetooth in this system. And it's much better than what we've ever had before. But if you do a lot of texting by voice, I'm really going to encourage you to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because it's a much more robust texting system. And click on the vehicle icon in the menu for our vehicle features. Trip information will show current trip details and historic trip details. You can clear the data or request to update. The current view is the default view. Coming back to vehicle and looking at vehicle alerts. This is a brand new vehicle, so there aren't any vehicle alerts at this time, but if there are vehicle alerts that you've received notifications about, you can review them here. On some packages, you are also able to operate the power seats from the front main screen. Seat controls, arrangement, and then just touch the seat that you would like to adjust. And click on the gear at the bottom of the Lexus interface menu bar, and let's explore our settings on the new system. On our primary settings screen on the top left, you'll see the current driver. You can refresh the detected profiles by clicking refresh. You can add additional driver profiles by clicking manual setup and following the prompts to add an additional driver. You may have three driver profiles paired to the vehicle. You can also sign out to guest mode if you would prefer to not have your driver profile active. Before you sign out to guest mode, make sure you know the PIN for your Lexus account. To set or reset a PIN, open your Lexus app, click on the profile icon, click account, and then security settings. If you've set a PIN, it's going to say reset PIN under account PIN. If it doesn't say reset, it will say set PIN, and that's going to allow you to set up a new PIN. But if you don't remember it, go ahead and reset it. It might ask you to sign back into your Lexus app just for authentication purposes. You're going to choose a six digit PIN, and that's going to allow you to sign back in to your Lexus driver's profile. So if we take a look, under our driver profile, we have Apple CarPlay showing right at the top. And if we come to navigation 
and take a look at our destinations from our Lexus app, we'll see that we have a home address that's been added. We don't have a work address set up at this time, but we could add that in the app if we'd like to. And we also have favorites that have been saved to this driver profile. But if you'd like to valet park and you don't want this information to be accessible to a valet, come to settings, sign out to guest mode. In guest mode, notice that our Apple CarPlay is no longer accessible. And if we come to our maps, open destinations, and in guest mode, home and work are not available in guest mode. Also, our favorites that are saved to our driver profile will not show here. You can set favorites in guest mode if you would like, but this way your private information will not be accessible while you are not in the vehicle. If we look at the top left, it says current driver is the guest driver profile. Click on your driver profile name, and then you'll be prompted to enter your six digit PIN. There's not an enter button, you just complete entering the PIN and then your driver profile will load and your settings will be automatically adjusted for you. You'll notice that if the vehicle has trouble connecting to your profile, then you can just choose your profile and sign in with your PIN. To delete a driver profile, select the primary driver profile click edit, and then you can click on the minus symbol to delete any driver profiles that you would prefer to remove from the system. Make sure to note that you do have to be on the primary driver profile in order to delete a primary driver. Coming to personal info, we see that we are the primary driver saved to the vehicle. This is the Bluetooth device, the phone that's associated with my driver profile. I can manage devices if I'd like to add another device or choose a different phone to be my primary connected phone. Clicking settings to go back, coming back to personal info, and this is where we link the key for our driver profile. Make sure to have only one key in the vehicle. That's going to be your selected key that helps your profile to be loaded when the key is detected by the vehicle. You can reset the settings to go back to the factory default. You can also choose to delete this driver. Coming to Bluetooth and devices, this is where you can add additional devices to the vehicle for Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can also select a device and choose how you want that device to be actively connected using the phone or media through Bluetooth or Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, depending on that particular device. This is also where you would click Forget to forget a device when you get a new phone and you connect your new phone to the system. Pushing settings in the top left to go back. General, accessibility, you can leave on or turn off the screen beep. You can also customize the sensitivity to the screen. As a tip, it lets you know that the higher value is more sensitive and has smoother operation if you are wearing gloves. So three, two, or one, two is the default. And without the screen beep, you have silent operation. Date and time. This is the long way around to get to the clock settings. The shortcut for clock settings, just click the clock and then you're right back where we just were. Settings, general, date and time. If you have the Lexus Drive Connect system, which is the navigation bundle of cloud-based connected maps, you'll have the capability of setting your date and time by GPS. You can also choose a 24-hour clock, just toggle to turn that feature on, or a 12-hour clock, 
and you can customize the layout of the date format for notifications that will come to the inbox on the vehicle. Now, if you turn off set date and time by GPS, or if your vehicle does not have an active Drive Connect subscription, you'll still have the selection of the 12 or 24 hour clock. You'll see some additional setting customizations. We can adjust our time zone and toggle daylight saving time on or off. You can also click set time automatically. You saw that the time changed right away. With the Drive Connect subscription, the time zone can be automatically detected. Also with the Drive Connect subscription, daylight saving time can be auto detected. If you don't have that subscription, don't worry, you can just toggle daylight saving time on or off depending on the time of year. Based on your time zone and daylight saving settings, you can either choose to set time automatically or set the time manually. When you set the time automatically, the set time manually selection will turn off. If you choose to set time manually, that allows you to adjust your time a bit if you need a little extra. You can even choose set minutes to zero zero if you need to start back over at the top of the hour. The easiest setting, if you have it though, is of course set date and time by GPS. Choosing keyboard, we can clear our search history. Language and units, you can select English, Spanish, or French. The measurement information can be set automatically based on your region, or you can choose to set it manually and make your selection for the type of miles per gallon or kilometer reading that you would prefer. Now we'll push settings with the go back arrow to go back to the previous screen and come down to notifications. Choose the things that you would like to be notified about. Software updates, vehicle suggestions. You can have this set to on while the vehicle is stopped or off. These suggestions pop up on the multi-information display. You'll also see notifications if you've left a window or the moonroof open. Navigation during calls. This means that voice activation will talk over a phone call. So you would receive your turn-by-turn -turn instructions while you're simultaneously talking on the phone. If you don't prefer that, then toggle that setting to off like you see it here. The types of notifications that you can receive for navigation are turn-by-turn -turn instructions, traffic alerts, state border guidance, unverified roads, and high occupancy lanes. Coming to Wi-Fi, we have two different capabilities in Wi-Fi. You can subscribe to the hotspot with AT&T. The vehicle currently comes with a trial. Having a hotspot in your vehicle allows passengers to use phones or tablets that don't have data plans to use your vehicle's hotspot to connect to the internet. A Wi-Fi hotspot is also required for the Apple Music and Amazon Music streaming services that are compatible with the vehicle. Toggle to turn on the hotspot. You can customize the password or you can choose connect without a password. That's going to allow two minutes for people that are in your vehicle to connect to your hotspot without using a password. You'll see a countdown clock appear here. So you're not disabling the password permanently, just for a short window of time if you would like your passengers to be able to just hop on your hotspot really easily. You do need to stay on this screen for that permission to be available. Otherwise, the countdown clock will just stop. When you leave that screen, if you come back to the hotspot, you'll notice that the password has been re-enabled. The other Wi-Fi capability allows your vehicle to connect to an external Wi-Fi network. 
If you choose to connect your vehicle to a Wi-Fi network, it's going to temporarily disconnect from Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You would click Continue to allow that feature to turn off, turning on the Wi-Fi capability to let your vehicle connect to an available network. Choose the network that you would like to connect to. Type in a password if required. When you turn Wi-Fi off, notice that it's not going to automatically reconnect you for CarPlay or Android Auto. Just come back to Settings, Bluetooth and Devices, select your phone, and choose Connect. And it's going to reconnect you for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto after you've exited that connection mode for a Wi-Fi network. Keep in mind that this Wi-Fi connection is really only required for large over-the-air updates and your vehicle will prompt you when you need that. Clicking to go back, coming to display. You can turn the display off and when you do, you will see that you may have fingerprints on your display. A good idea is to keep a lint-free microfiber type cloth in the vehicle. With touchscreens, it's just something you have to be aware of. If you've turned the screen off, touch the screen. It says, touch to turn screen on. Just touch right on that message to turn your display back on. And the screen will be back on and you can choose additional customizations. You can allow the screen to change from light to dark mode based on the time of day and ambient light. You can choose for that setting to adjust automatically, or you can manually select light, which would be daytime mode, or the dark theme for nighttime mode. You can also adjust the brightness and contrast of your display. Choosing the camera selection, you can adjust the brightness and contrast or how the screen appears from the camera view. Pushing go back and coming down to sound and media. The vehicle has an automatic sound levelizer. When you turn that on, that means that the vehicle is going to automatically adjust volume based on driving speed. If your phone is currently connected for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you'll notice that some of the sound settings are going to be grayed out. That means those settings apply to a phone that's connected using the Bluetooth only connection. Click on the gear, open Bluetooth and devices, select your phone's device, and then choose a Bluetooth connection for phone and media. Now let's come back settings, sound and media, and now we can see our additional customizations for a Bluetooth connected device. You'll notice that it's not possible to have a Bluetooth only connection and an Apple CarPlay connection or Android Auto. It's just one connection type or the other. For phone volume settings, you can adjust the volume of your ringtone, if you're going to text using a Bluetooth connection, you can adjust the volume for the new message setting here. If you have an iPhone, in order to have text messaging come through Bluetooth on the vehicle, make sure that you open the Bluetooth settings on your iPhone. Look for Lexus LX connected and click on the information menu. We want to turn on show notifications. That will allow text messages to come through the system on the vehicle when the phone is connected for Bluetooth instead of Apple CarPlay. Once your texting permissions are turned on in your phone, you'll see the new message volume setting is accessible and you can control the volume level. You can also adjust the received volume for Bluetooth connected calls. Scrolling down for the voice on the vehicle. So the system voice and the driving assist notification volume. The surround sound settings can be customized from 3D, 2D, or you can turn surround sound off if that's your preference.
coming to sound tuning to adjust the treble, mid-range, and bass of whatever audio source you are currently listening to, you do have to have the audio system turned on. Just press the power and volume dial and then you'll have access to those customizations. You can also adjust the speakers for balance and fade. If you've made an adjustment and then you would like to recenter the sound in the vehicle, just click recenter. Coming to media, you can choose the default source for where the vehicle should be searching for music if you give a voice command asking for certain music to play. You can turn cover art on or off. Coming to your additional audio sources, radio for AM or FM, you can allow FM information to be displayed. You can turn off or on the HD station signals for FM or AM. You can clear the radio station history Coming to the Grace Note database, you can allow this to be turned on so that you can have up-to-date artwork and information. If you turn this off, you also will not be able to have an auto-generated station list based on the vehicle's location. This is a nice item to leave turned on. Hybrid radio was a way to use cellular data connection to make up for a poor radio signal, but the feature has been discontinued and an over-the-air update will remove this setting from your system. Sirius XM settings, you can allow notifications from Sirius XM. You can block explicit content. This system does have a tune start that allows songs to start at the beginning of the song rather than partway through. It's a pretty cool detail. You can also clear your listening history. Within the satellite radio customizations, you can set up notifications for sports, toggling that feature off or on, or customizing alerts for your favorite sport events. Choose your sport, and then choose your team. Go Astros! Now you'll receive notifications about that particular team that you've selected. If you haven't selected a team, you're not going to receive alerts for that particular sport. Coming to music, you can have notifications for specific artists or songs so that you know when a favorite artist is playing. These are selected in your radio system and you can click edit delete all, or just delete one particular item. Coming to help and support, you have a customer support number for satellite radio. This is where you locate your radio ID. Pushing go back, go back again. Coming to navigation, map details. You can allow show speed limit, traffic incidents, free flowing traffic information, and then you can allow certain points of interest, home, work, favorites, and even nearby parking. If you need to calibrate the map, select calibrate and drag the map to your set or current position, and then click save. Map calibration is typically done at your Lexus dealer when they are setting up the vehicle before it's sold route options. We finally have a great system for customizing route options. It's so much easier to understand. Do you want to avoid toll roads, highways, ferries, seasonal roads, or border crossings? If you do not have a toll tag for your vehicle, you might want to avoid toll roads, so you would toggle that to on. And now when you are getting navigation from your Drive Connect cloud-based mapping system, it will avoid toll roads. If you do have a toll tag, however, you don't want to avoid toll roads. You'd like the option to be able to use them. So make sure that that is toggled to off. Now we will be allowing toll roads, highways, ferries, seasonal roads, and border crossings. Coming back, to vehicle customize. Our light settings, we can adjust the sensitivity for the automatic low beam headlights. 
When you're choosing the sensitivity customization, you're basically telling the system from the baseline or the normal setting. If you'd like the headlights to come on sooner, you want to choose bright or brighter. That's going to increase the sensitivity. If you'd like to delay when they turn on, you would choose dark or darker to allow the auto headlights to turn on a little bit later than normal. Most people prefer the normal setting or to choose to have the lights come on sooner, so choosing bright or brighter for your customization. Just click OK to clear. The auto off timer. So after you have parked the vehicle and locked the vehicle, the headlights can stay on for an additional 30, 60, or 90 seconds, or you can select to turn that off, and when you lock the vehicle, the headlights will turn off automatically. But sometimes it's nice to have a little additional light as you're making your way to your destination. Allowing daytime running lights to be on or selecting to turn them off. Exterior lighting. These are your additional welcome lights or puddle lights. You can allow them to stay on for 7.5 seconds, 15 seconds, which is the default, or extend it to 30 seconds. Or you can choose to turn that feature off. And the same can be adjusted for the interior lights, 7.5, 15, 30 seconds, or off. Those items are tied to the door mode operation, so you would want to make sure that your interior lighting door mode is set to on. Illumination. On a Lexus interface vehicle with the customized color themes, you can click on the theme selection, and choose from a variety of really beautiful lighting options. You can even choose a custom color. Now, if you are going to set a custom color, you'll click Custom, then click OK. Then click on the color box and adjust on the palette. Click OK to save. You can choose the brightness level and adjust brightness for all zones or by zone. If you choose by zone, then you can adjust each zone of ambient lighting, front, rear, or foot lighting. Coming to door control, the top two items are things that you might want to consider customizing. So this is about automatically locking the vehicle and automatically unlocking the vehicle. Keep in mind that when you walk away from your LX, it is not going to automatically lock for you after it's been driven. This is talking about automatically locking the doors when you are about to drive. So do you want them to automatically lock when you shift out of park? Or do you want them to automatically lock when you get up to speed, which is about three miles per hour? Or you can turn that off and then you will be in charge of locking the doors on your drive. Automatic unlock is something I really like to point out. The default is set to automatically unlock the doors when you shift to park. I like to change that to either off or by the driver's door. If you choose by the driver's door, that means when you've stopped the vehicle and you put it into park, all of the doors remain locked. But when you open the driver's door, they will unlock. If you choose off when you open the driver's door, all of the other doors remain locked. Make sure to note that if you choose off, the driver and the front passenger can simply exit the vehicle by opening the door. Second row passengers, they'll need to pull the door handle twice. Notice that the first pull will not open the door, but the second pull will unlock and open, but only this door. All other doors remain locked. For locking and unlocking from the electronic key fob, you can turn on or off the two presses of the unlock button, which would unlock the entire vehicle on the second press. When you have the lock when door opened feature turned on, it's kind of like tailgating mode. That means even with the back door open, you can close the passenger doors and then use the lock button on your key fob to lock the LX. You're not able to lock from the smart access system on the door handle, you'll hear an alert, but you can unlock with smart access.
you will notice that the mirrors will not fold in because the back door is still open, but the remainder of the vehicle is locked. Close the back door, then the vehicle will finish the locking process. It locks the back door and automatically folds your mirrors in as long as you have that feature turned on. The smart access system can be customized to unlock the driver's door only when you're unlocking from the driver's door handle or to unlock all doors when you're unlocking from the driver's door handle. There is an automatic relock timer. That means that if you have unlocked from the key fob and you haven't opened a door, so maybe you clicked unlock on your key fob, you forgot something, you walked away, and then you came back, your vehicle will relock for you. Do not confuse this with going for a drive, putting the car in park, and then walking away without locking your car. It is not going to do that. This means that if you have unlocked from the key fob and you have not opened a door, the vehicle will relock after 30, 60, or 120 seconds, or you can turn that off. It will depend on whatever you select and click OK. You can also increase the feedback tone, so the beep sounds when you're operating the buttons on your key. If you would like to customize the opening position of the back door from the settings on the main screen, just click opening position and you can choose five, four, three, two, or one for your opening position. Make your selection, click OK, and then you can press the button inside the vehicle to power open the back door and see how you like it. If you are concerned about the height of the opening for your garage to make sure that you're not going to accidentally damage that power back door, test this out when you are not in your garage. Boarding and exit. You can customize the amount of slide for the seat, full, partial, or off. Off means the seat would not move at all when you turn off the vehicle. If you're like me and you're not very tall, you might want the seat only to do a partial slide so that it makes it easier for you to reach the pedals when you're starting the car. Because remember, it is going to stay a little bit back for you to make it easy to get in and out of the vehicle. But once you start the car, then it's going to fully adjust to your saved driving position. But don't forget, you can also just put on your seat belt and the seat and steering wheel will make these adjustments for you before you even start your Lexus. Now, if you are tall and you have this on full and you already have your saved driving position really far back, or if you're not very tall and you have your driving position saved very high up, it may not make the adjustments that you're expecting because it either does not have any additional room on the track or it is concerned about headroom clearance or foot clearance of rear cabin passengers. You can also adjust the steering column. When you turn the vehicle off, would you like it to tilt away, to telescope in, or the tilt and telescopic mode, which is actually my favorite. That is where it tucks up and away when you turn off the vehicle. You can also turn that setting to off if you prefer. Custom drive mode. The custom drive mode is selected like any other drive mode. Just turn the dial and choose custom. The difference is that we can customize the powertrain, suspension feel, steering feel, and how the air conditioning system operates and save those settings to our custom drive mode. We'll also review the drive mode selector when we go over the lower utility screen and the lower center console features. For climate, we can adjust the auto seat temperature. So the heat and fan, remember the first time you press those buttons, it's going to the auto mode. So you can choose for the front left, front right, rear left, and rear right settings for the level you want the auto mode to activate. Zero is the default. You can increase by one or two or decrease by one or two. You can adjust the steering wheel temperature time, so how long it is going to be in operation. Zero is the default. 
plus one or two or minus one or two. So increasing by one or two levels or decreasing by one or two levels. The automatic climate settings for AC compressor mode with auto. Here in Houston, we're gonna leave that on. We want that AC compressor on basically all the time, but depending on where you live, you may be able to turn that off. The smog sensitivity level, the default is that zero level. It does not mean there is no smog sensitivity. It just means that's the standard level of sensitivity for the smog sensor. You can increase its sensitivity one, two, or three levels, or decrease its sensitivity if you live in an area that does not have a lot of potential traffic pollution. Pushing go back. Coming to voice and search. The wake word is turned on for the vehicle with Hey Lexus. If you turn off the wake word, then you would need to use the voice command button or the soft button on your main screen to activate voice commands. You can allow the voice prompts to stay on or you can turn them off if you would rather hear beeps instead of voice prompts. Coming to dealer info, this should be customized by your dealer, but if you would like to make changes, you can. You can edit or delete. Info and security, this will show the vehicle name. You can nickname or rename your vehicle here. This is also the name that's going to show up in a list of Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay devices when you're pairing your phone to the system. But make sure to note that the vehicle nickname in the Lexus app settings does not currently sync with the vehicle name that you see on screen. So if you're going to nickname your vehicle, you'll want to do that in the app and in the vehicle. You can turn on the privacy lock. When you enable the privacy lock, it's going to require a password to be entered into the head unit if it becomes disconnected from power. We're not talking about just turning the vehicle off. This means if for some reason the battery has been disconnected from the vehicle, then this code will be required to access your information on the main display. Click OK, and then you can create a password between four and 15 characters in length. You'll enter the password to lock, and then you would enter the password to unlock. Just keep in mind that this is not a valet mode. If you turn the vehicle off, it's not going to request this password. For valet mode, come to settings and choose sign out to guest mode, and then the vehicle will require your PIN to sign back in to your driver profile with your personal and customized settings. If you valet park your vehicle, you can lock the glove box, locate the mechanical key inside the key fob. Using the mechanical key in the key cylinder, turn it to the left to unlock and open the glove box and to the right to lock the glove box. Keep the mechanical key with you and give the key fob to the valet. When you're ready to restore the mechanical key to the key fob, just make sure to insert until you hear a click. Coming back to the info and security, this is where you will also do a system reset if you needed to refresh the entire system on the vehicle. It's kind of like our previous version of delete personal data. But if everything is set up the way you want it, do not do a system reset. Software updates, you'll be notified when there are software updates available and then you would follow the prompts and steps on screen. If you need to reinstall any apps on the vehicle, you can click reinstall all apps. Remote authorization is complete. We had already authorized our Lexus account and we have seen our Lexus remote feature right in our Lexus app. And that's our complete settings menu. Coming down the center console to our new utility display. It's also touch operational and you use it to control additional climate settings, 
off-roading features, and it has its own setting screen. You can even turn it completely off. To turn it back on, touch the screen, and then it tells you, touch to turn screen on. Just touch right on that message to turn your display back on. You can adjust the contrast and brightness for this screen, customize additional settings. The automatic screen change, you can turn that off, allowing that screen to stay open, or you can customize that automatic screen change time from 20 seconds, which is the default, to one or five minutes. This means if I'm in the settings screen and I don't take any action for 20 seconds, it's going to revert back to a main screen. The SW sensitivity level, this just stands for the screen operation sensitivity level. One is the lowest sensitivity and three is the highest. Software information is listed here. Pushing go back. Let's take a look at the climate control system. Most of the climate control buttons are located here. Manual controls to close or open the vents. When you're on the front climate control screen on your utility display, you'll have driver temperature selection, warmer or cooler, and passenger temperature selection, warmer or cooler. Notice that when you operate the passenger temperature, you turn off sync mode. When you turn sync mode on, it's going to sync to one temperature throughout the entire vehicle. When you're on the rear climate screen, the temperature selectors operate rear climate. Right side passenger, left side passenger. We have auto for fan speed, turn the fan off, or control the fan speed manually on the front screen. Slide or tap, more fan, less fan. You can also control the driver's airflow mode independently from the passenger airflow mode. If the defogger is triggered, you're going to see that turn on for both sides. Otherwise, with sync turned off, you can have different airflow front and rear. If you'd like to select sync, you're going to sync the entire vehicle to one temperature, the temperature selected for the driver's temperature. And notice our airflow mode also syncs up. And even our fan speed. Front defrost or defogger, it's going to take over certain controls in order to use that front defrost or defogger. Rear window and side view mirror defrost or defogger. Recirculating air or outside air, or let the LX choose based on the vehicle speed and the smog sensor located on the vehicle. Windshield wiper de-icer, on or off, and climate concierge, putting everything in auto mode based on the temperature that you've selected and the outside temperature. That means it's going to adjust fan speed, airflow mode, the heated and ventilated seats, and even the heated steering wheel to more accurately maintain your selected cabin temperature. If you'd like to turn climate concierge off, it's kind of like auto. Once you turn it on, you don't push the button again to turn it off. You take over by adjusting the fan speed. Airflow mode, and taking over selection for heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, 
and even the controls for the passenger side, if that's been selected. I know it sounds like a lot of things to have to turn off, but what that lets you know is that you can have a much more highly customized setup, allowing some things to operate automatically and others to operate manually. A lot of people like to turn on climate concierge and allow everything to remain in auto mode except the fan speed. It's completely up to you. Notice that we aren't able to turn on or adjust our seat climate or steering climate from the utility screen. Remember our tip, if it has an outline around it, then you can control it. It's clickable on screen, but without an outline, it's not clickable. So we just need to come down and use our buttons to operate our seat and steering climate on the lower center console. There are three levels of heat and fan and an auto mode. The first press of either the fan or the heat will turn on auto mode. Just press again to take over, high, medium, and low. Press one more time to turn that off. The fan works in the same way. First press, auto. Second press, high, medium, low, off. Same thing on the passenger side. Steering wheel heat has an auto mode as well. And two levels of heat. Just press until you have the setting the way you'd like it. Additional climate control operation happens on the utility screen. AC compressor on, off, or auto. Coming to options, we can allow the air conditioning compressor to operate in an eco heat and cool mode. That will depend on the type of climate that you live in. You may or may not want to allow that, completely up to you. S flow is like a smart flow. If you turn S flow on, Airflow is focused primarily on the driver or driver and front passenger. That means the, the vehicle is trying to determine whether or not you have additional passengers in the vehicle. If you would like airflow throughout the entire cabin, make sure that S flow is turned off. Otherwise, the system will cancel airflow to unoccupied passenger seats. After a few seconds, that screen will clear. Notice that when you are on the four-wheel drive utility screen, you still have your primary controls for climate control along the bottom of the screen. So it's always very easily accessed. And your hazard lights are right in the middle for easy access in an emergency. Let's take a look at our other off-roading and four-wheel drive capabilities. Any item that has a highlight around it is clickable. So you'll notice the brake and accelerator readout is not clickable, but the G-Force monitor is. If you click on it, it gives you an option to clear the monitor records. You can also select the word clear to get the same option. Just press go back or let the message fade out. You can turn off or on the easy access mode, that's what lowers the vehicle when you turn the vehicle off, making it easier to get in and out of the LX. If you open a door during that movement, it is going to stop, and then when you close the doors, it will finish the adjustment. You'll see the easy access icon on the dash. You can turn off the adaptive height control. Moving along the lower center console, if your vehicle has adaptive height control, it will be raised or lowered with these buttons. Use the new utility display to view the operation. We are currently in the lowest position, adaptive height control selected to low. If we push the button to raise the height, you'll see it flash, and you'll see an indication of the position adjust. Your adaptive height control setting status is seen here, as well as on the multi-information display. 
You can also see the nose of the vehicle adjust. Sometimes people are not aware of the movement at all. It is very smooth. If you're outside the vehicle, it's a little more obvious, especially in the high modes. High one, and high two, giving you the most possible ground clearance. Keep in mind that the height adjustments also are speed sensitive. So this is really more about driving at low speed under off-road conditions on rugged terrain. Some of these adjustments will also happen automatically when you're driving on the freeway at normal freeway driving speeds, the vehicle is going to make adjustments for better aerodynamics, for fuel economy, and a quieter ride. Coming back down to normal and even down to low. And coming down to our remaining functions. The four-wheel drive features are controlled with the soft buttons on the utility screen, hard buttons and dials on the center stack, and additional buttons on the lower center console. Let's take a look. The mode selector dial is a multitasking dial. It operates whichever one of these items is actively selected and turned on. Multi-terrain select, drive mode, or downhill assist control or crawl control. Under most normal driving conditions, you'll be in high four with the drive mode feature turned on. Notice the light for drive mode. We're going to use our mode selector dial. We can choose eco, comfort, normal, sport S, sport S plus, or custom. You'll see instrument panel graphics changes with each mode and the name of the mode at the top of the dial. You'll also receive a pop-up on your main screen. The drive mode selector will change the throttle response and the adaptive variable suspension where required. So the sport modes, especially Sport S Plus, will engage the suspension system and drive feel in a more sporty, aggressive way. And when you press on the accelerator, it's a more direct throttle response. If you come back to normal, comfort, or eco, it's going to change the throttle response. And for comfort and normal, it's going to change the drive feel. To set custom drive modes, You'll use settings on the main screen, allowing you to customize the powertrain, power, normal, or eco, the suspension from sport, normal, or comfort, the steering feel from sport to normal, and even the air conditioning system, eco or normal. Once you've made your selections, they'll be saved to the custom mode, drive mode setting. You can also use multi-terrain select in high four. And you'll notice the system automatically making some adjustments for you. So it brought us up to high one. Now we can use our mode selector dial to choose from auto, dirt, sand, mud, and deep snow. And you'll see the graphics change on your utility screen and your multi-information display. To put the LX in low four for more extreme off-roading conditions, apply the brake, shift into neutral, then press the bezel in and turn to the left. If you try to change the mode from high four to low four or back again, and you're not in neutral, listen to what happens. It gives you an alert. Make sure to apply the brake, shift into neutral, and then you can access low four. Now it's not beeping and yelling at us. 
we have four low turned on, it will automatically turn off traction control and the pre-collision system. It will also give you an indication that those items are off and it's going to make ride height adjustments based on your selections. So we've automatically adjusted to the highest adaptive height control setting. If you have chosen to be in low four, you will not be able to choose the drive mode selector because you are going to be driving at lower speeds using the multi-terrain select feature. Also in low four, you can turn on crawl control, apply the brake, shift into drive, press the downhill assist crawl control button, and then use the mode selector to adjust your speed in crawl control. With different settings all the way up from low to high. Basically one, two, three, four, or five miles per hour. Crawl control will assist the vehicle with traction moving up and down. When you press the button to turn on crawl control, it will deactivate the multi-terrain select feature. So this is multi-purpose. When you're using multi-terrain select, you select with this dial. When you're using crawl control, you select your speed with this dial. Just push the button again to turn off crawl control and multi-terrain select will re-engage. Downhill assist control is a setting that's available in high four. Apply the brake, shift into neutral, crawl will deactivate and coming back to high four and then you can engage downhill assist control, shift back into drive to use downhill assist control. You'll use the mode selector dial to adjust your speed from the lowest setting of three miles an hour up to 10 and even 18 miles per hour to assist on long descents. When you turn on multi-terrain select in high four or you access the low four wheel drive system, you'll see a slightly different screen. This is our multi-terrain select monitor. We have our menu on the left, you have additional ground clearance visuals. You'll see the running boards on the right and left hand side, and you'll see different markers for the front. See how we have where our wheels are pointing. Those are our yellow lines, always associated with our wheels and direction. But when we get closer to a full turn, on either direction, we see that blue line change to show the arc of your intended path. Your backup camera in multi-terrain select mode also shows the running boards, those side angles, so you can really navigate your terrain. That is customizable with our menu on the left hand side. Clicking through all of our backup camera view line options and shortcutting back to settings. So our menus are very similar and they're all on the left hand side. Clicking the X to close, toggling through our different view options. That takes us through to a front wheel view, our view that includes the straight ahead view and our running boards. You can also press that hard button, that view monitor button, to toggle you through the same selection. So it's just like clicking the soft button on screen or the X to close. Again, just toggling through either with the view monitor button or the buttons on screen. Our front view and our dual side view, and this is that under view that you're seeing now. We're also, under certain circumstances, able to access an under 
rear view mode. That's only going to be accessible at certain times, otherwise it will appear grayed out as you see here. When you're in motion, you're able to select the under rear view. Then just press go back. Once it's been accessed, then you'll be able to continue to click on it. But if it goes gray, then that just means you need to move the vehicle forward a little bit or forward and back until you're able to access that under rear view icon. Now we have in drive our under rear view and the side views on both sides of the LX. And this would be in the forward position. Right now it looks like we're driving over a black surface. That's just because there's not enough images that it could stitch together because we're doing this inside the shop. Notice that it's grayed out again. We've been sitting still a little too long. So you would just move the vehicle a bit and then you'll see the icon be accessible. Shifting into drive and we're currently on that under the vehicle see-through mode for the front of the vehicle. So these are our front wheels. If we start to drive, it looks like we can see through the bottom of the LX. It's just stitching images together, but that's our front view. If we would like to access the rear undercarriage view, we need to select that icon and then we're able to look underneath. It, it's common. Sometimes you may see black rectangle sections. That just means that there weren't images to stitch together at that time. Now I am backing up. So I may want to clear out of that since I know I am coming up against a wall. It, it would continue to beep at me if necessary. I'll show you how that works. So that's what it looks like if you're getting a parking sensor warning while you're in the rear undercarriage view, just click to zoom in or back out on that main central image. You can also do that moving forward. So in the undercarriage view, moving forward, we could click to zoom in or out. In reverse, we have a number of different backup camera views for the multi-terrain select monitor just click to select the view that you prefer. Coming down to that rear undercarriage view, press the arrow to go back, and then you can make the customizations to the backup camera lines for multi-terrain select. Notice that you can customize the backup camera lines for multi-terrain select view and the drive mode backup camera view independently of one another. Turning off multi-terrain select, vehicle levels out to the normal drive height, and our monitor goes back to our normal drive mode view. Coming down on the right-hand side, you have a USB-C port for charging and a USB-A port for charging and data if you would like to plug in for tethered Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And on the left-hand side, you have a 12-volt accessory charger. An optional wireless charger. Just place your compatible phone on the charger and as long as your phone and case are compatible, you'll see the charger engage. Taking a look at the buttons on the left hand side, we have our electric automatic parking brake. When your emergency or parking brake is set to auto, so you go into park, it applies your parking brake. You'll see the word park in red on the left side of your dash. If you push down, parking brake unable to disengage, press brake and push parking brake switch to release. That means if you want to disable the emergency parking brake while the vehicle is in park, rather than shift into gear to turn it off, you need to apply the foot brake, then press the emergency parking brake button down you'll see the word park turn off. To turn it back on, lift up on the parking brake button. You'll see the word park turn back on. And if you pull up and hold, 
it will reactivate the shift interlock function. When the shift interlock is activated, that will link your emergency parking brake with the shift position to park. So you go into park, it applies your parking brake. You come out of park, it turns it off. Brake hold holds the foot brake for you. With your seat belt on, press the hold button and you turn brake hold on, you'll see the word hold in green on the right hand side. In drive, when you've come to a stop and you've applied the brake, when the word hold in gold lights up on the left hand side, you can remove your foot from the brake and the system will hold it in place for you. If you receive a message that the time has elapsed for the vehicle to continue to hold the foot brake for you, go ahead and reapply the brake. When you're ready to drive, just apply the accelerator. And it will disengage until you've come to a complete stop again, holding gold on the left, you can release the foot brake. Just press the hold button to turn the feature back off. To engage the center differential locking button, press the button. You'll hear the mechanism lock and you'll see the light flash until it's locked and then it will show solid. To turn off the center differential lock, just press the button again. Press the traction control off button to turn the feature off or on. When you've turned off traction control, you'll have a traction control turned off message on the dash. This is important to know about if you are going to go off-roading and you need to allow the wheels to slip. Traction control is designed to prevent wheel slippage, but under certain off-roading conditions, you may prefer to have more wheel slip to navigate the terrain. Just press again to turn traction control back on. Coming over to the center console that can be opened from the driver's side, the front passenger side, and even the second row. We have a cool box that you can turn on. You'll hear the fan. It's not a refrigerator, it is a cool box and it operates off of the air conditioning system in the vehicle. So it won't operate when the car is turned off. So keep that in mind when you're putting items inside. It does have a removable small top tray and a very deep storage area. Very deep, like deep, 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 deep. Wowzers. The small little cubby can slide back and forth and it has felted edges so that it doesn't scratch the exterior surface. Thank you so much for stopping by the Lexus virtual classroom today. I know there's a ton of information on this Lexus LX. Hopefully this answered all of your questions and then some. If you have more questions about your Lexus, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Second row headrests are adjusted manually. Locate the latch underneath woo and they'll come right off <laughs>